Welcome back, everybody, to a special episode here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson channel. Um, and today we have uh, a wonderful guest. Uh, let me first thank everybody for tuning in. For those of you watching the replay, come on in, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Today we want to talk about a, a very important topic. I've been uh, listening to this brother for about a month now, but man, it seems like I've been knowing him all my life because he's in the comments, he's on the show. I'm on his show. He, he, you know, he taking over the whole show. He trolling niggas on the show. But the brother is really good, man. He really has a heart for the community. And today we want to talk about do black people create their own enemies in the black community? And the brother is really intelligent. He's very smart. He's very charismatic. And that is the one and the only George Making of the George Making YouTube channel. Want to welcome him here today to share some knowledge with us. What's going on, my brother? What's going on? Hey, what's the? This is the other channel, right? What's the yeah, name of this? This is the O'Shea Duke Jackson main channel. Just O'Shea Duke Jackson is the, the channel. Right, just, yeah, I'm trying to bring it up. Okay. So, you can see the people talking about you in the comment section. Yeah, I can, I can see them going in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're going to be tearing me up. Yeah. So, uh, and guys, thank you for, 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 for coming in and everything like that. Um, You still, you still bring it up? Yeah, I got it. No, I'm ready now. You got it. Um, okay. Let me let's just tell people a little bit about um about, about your channel. Um some of us have seen you on Sonetter's channel. I've seen you on there, but kind of talk right. about, you know, um what your channel is about, what you're aiming to achieve. Um, my channel is about developing the minds of black people, uh bringing black people back together from all the different demographics that we've been spread out to. Um and just 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 bringing awareness to certain things go, that we that we are walking around oblivious to. I feel like a lot of our people are like walking zombies, and we've been conditioned to just do what we're told. We don't think for ourselves. Uh, we create everything, and we give it we give it out to everybody else. So my channel is raw and uncut, and I try to be down. I, I try to be down the middle. I get a lot of flack from uh, some from some brothers because I'm big on. Uh, black male accountability because I believe we are the leaders. I believe if I can ship up and, and, and clean up some brothers and get them right, like you know, we can begin to fix the community. So 90% of my message is for black men. Okay. Get a lot of flack from black men because they think that I'm attacking them, but I'm actually empowering them. And I'm gonna go over some of these things today. You know what I'm saying? Like I believe, I believe, and I always say on my channel, um, when the right when 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 black men stand on righteous footing with his chest up, confident. Knowing what he want, you ain't got to complain about women. The right women to show up. Those that rejected you, they wasn't supposed to be with you anyway. <laughs> you know, everybody ain't gonna make it. So you know, I'm 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 just for restoring what's been taken away from us, restoring the black families, uh, putting the black man back at the doorstep of the black community. And that's just you know that's that's the gist of what my page is about. If anybody watch me, you know, uh, uh, I don't play the sides. Uh, attack the black man or attack the black woman. I don't I let other people do that shit. I ain't got time for that shit. I'm trying to get back together. So that's basically what my page is about. Okay, so um, let me let me talk a little bit about a, a comment that you said, and I made a video kind of based off that comment. And the video was called "White People Treat Me Better Than Black People," and I referenced a quote that I heard you say. You said that black people create their own coons. And it stuck with me, and I believe it would be very, very accurate. Can you kind of describe what you mean when you say black people create their own cults? Well, it's, 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 it's man, it's, it's in, in, our, in our community, you know, in our community, we, we've been conditioned to look down on um, on, 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 edu on education, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a many reasons why we do it. Um, we, we, we create our own coons by the way we treat each other. We, tr we create our own coons uh, uh, by us not um, having commerce, by us not having commerce together where we're not able to forge relationships. Like we create our own coons on so many different levels. You don't even realize it. Then we have to define what exactly is a coon. Okay. So this is the problem that's going on in the community now. Um, you have you have people, you have people that are educated that are so-called what we what we call articulate. They can speak that English vernacular or English language a certain way. Uh, they're good at math. Um, they assimilated into the system and they made money and they take care of their families. And a lot of people in the communities are calling them a coon. But 
I think that we have to redefine exactly what a coon is. Now, I'm a person that some of those educated people would have called a Pookie and Ray Ray. I'm from the hood, right? Mm -hmm. been, in and out, been in and out of prison, made a lot of money, lost a lot of money, made a lot of money back, uh, dealing with real estate, do what I got to do now, right, at 43 years old. But I would, I would call myself, when I was growing up in the hood, destroying my community, I was a fucking coon. Mm -hmm. I didn't know better at the time. I didn't understand. See, this is, this is what we got to understand. When I was running wild in the community, destroying my community, uh, 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 caught up, caught up in the nigger traps that were set up by white supremacy, that when they dumped drugs into our community after creating conditions of poverty, mm -hmm. and running around, I was caught up in a coon trap. I was a coon. Okay. And I didn't realize it though, because I, I wasn't educated to some of the pitfalls and traps that were set in place. Uh, so we got to really break this down. What is a coon? You running around and you having four and five different babies. And without a care in the world saying you don't need a man, you are a fucking coon. You uh, uh, get some education and you assimilate into other cultures and you begin to look down on your own people uh, 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 just to get acceptance into other cultures. You are a fucking coon. Now, 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 now the thing, the thing is, the thing is. If you you're um, you got some people that get educated, they get a black family. They move out of the community and they do what they got. They do the best that they can do for their communities. That doesn't make them a coon. What makes you a coon is if you are knowingly participating in the destruction of your people or knowingly, knowingly selling your people out after, after the ancestors done put in so much for you to get an education, you assimilate into those other cultures and look down on your own people. Where history showed that our ancestors didn't do it. Your Larry Elders, your Thomas Souls. Those are coons. I can't call Dr. King, Paul Robeson, uh, 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 even Harry Belafonte, he may, he may have had a, a white wife, but he wasn't a coon. I'm not going to call him a coon because he financially supported Dr. King when the black church turned their back on him. Mm -hmm. So why would I call him a coon? Yeah, he had a white wife. I disagree with that, but, but he still understood what it was to be black. And he still supported Dr. King and he supported his children when he died. So who am I to call him a coon? But we know who the coons are. Those, th those that understand the history uh, what our ancestors went through and instead of them calling out rape, white supremacy and racism they find a comfortable spot in it those are your coons so if, you, if you, we just want to lay it out okay let me let me uh in good explanation let me go ahead and shout out to brother wake the hell up uh for the power of super chat brother i will be sending out your plaque today hotel shalom will say in the guest now in order for that to happen women can't be in the first to be on point then we choose our picking accordingly thank you for the super chat guys get the likes up and you guys, I will post a link to George Macon's YouTube channel so you can go and subscribe to him. Um, but let me kind of, you know, kind of talk about a point that you made. Um, and you talked about we have a lot of our people, and you've talked to some of these people on our panel. Um, one notably, I would suggest, you know, Xanatos <laughs> Clutch. Um, and and I will, I'm not going to say that he actually fits into this narrative because I don't think he does because he's always supporting, he's always over here and, and, and involved in black community discussions. But you talk about those black people who have some kind of um, attitude towards their own culture um, and they look to go integrate into another culture looking for acceptance from them, these people are also coons. Um, but what I want to understand is what, why do you think that there's a reason that this happens? Um, you know, why we have our own black people looking, you know, leaving the culture that they're starting to look down and they even go to other people and talk shit about, you know, the black community um, and, and, and say things derogatory about us. Why do you think this is happening? Well, you got to understand, you got to understand something, man. See, when we had these conversations, you got to deal with the history of our people and what happened to our people and how we got into conditions of poverty and why we wasn't able to pass down generational wealth. Just think of this, O'Shea. If, if, if when we came out of slavery, if we didn't have to go through Plessy versus Ferguson and Jim Crow, unfair housing uh, uh, acts, all kinds of different things, and we was able to just move and build communities, when we built our communities, if they wasn't burnt down, and we was able to pass down ge uh, generational wealth for the last 120 years, right? And we was able to build our own corporations and stuff like that. Would you have as many black people leaving the black community, looking down on the community? I don't I don't think so. No. Right. So what I'm saying is 
uh, uh, we were the, we were the slaves. We were the food that built the economy, and the, the the elite power structure had to make sure that we stay the food because we're not the immigrants coming in. We are the people here. We move the economy, our spending power. But but so the thing is, they made sure systematically and institutionally that we was not able to create economic surplus for our people and pass it down generationally. So we always had to go to the dominant society for acceptance or a job. They told us how we should dress. They told us they told us how we should look. They told us how we should behave. The very people, the very the, just think of this, O'Shea, the very people that actually savagely destroyed our culture, uh, uh, raped our women, uh, conditioned us as men to be subordinate to them, created a standard on how we should behave. And if we didn't, then they called us savages. And to this day, we still have that mentality. So we assimilate into these other cultures in order to survive. So we're subordinate to them and their education conditions you to look down on your own people. So what happens is some of the people look, watching you assimilate to that culture, they'll call you a coon. But for real, for real, if you break it down, we all are coon and that's black people, period. And we don't realize it because because we haven't been able to pass down generational wealth. This is what we was fighting. This is what the civil rights and all these things was fighting for. They understood, our grandfathers and great-grandfathers understood what they was up against and what they went through. So we can't say it was a long time ago because we're feeling the effects of that now. So you have people like Xanatos clutching them. He may talk English a certain way. He assimilating to other cultures, but that's because what do we have to offer our own people? We don't have much to offer our own people where, where we can be subordinate to each other and live off each other and create things off of each other. We don't have that type of culture. That culture was taken away from us systematically for generations. So this is why we have such vitriol towards each other. It was systematically done. So no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't um, disagree with that. But some people will argue, George, that at the end of the day, we all have a choice. Like for example, you guys, any people know that um, I, I like Donald Trump. Um, you know, I, I have my certain views on things that are very controversial. But for an example, you know, me and you could be on the opposite spectrum of a lot of things, but we're having this conversation. We collaborate. You know, we have a really good time. We're trying to build. We're trying to um, try to bring people together with our platforms. And so we are trying to be supportive of one another despite the differences. And, and we are making that as an actual choice. We're making a choice to dialogue despite the powers that be or situations that be. Some people will argue that black people still have a choice in how they interact with people and how they do for people, what they do for the communities that they live in. So, you know, although what you're saying is true, what about those people who say, well, George, that still is not good enough because they have a choice in how they can behave and treat people. They're not robots, they're humans. Oh, that's easy. You're making your choice based off of your conditioning. That's the part that people are missing. And a lot of our people know that, but they just want to make an excuse. You're making your choice based off your the way you're raised and your conditioning. That's why I asked the question when I started. Had we did not uh, had our grandfathers and great grandfathers had not had to go through Jim Crow, and they was able to just keep their cities without them being burned down and pass down generational wealth, where we built a morale around it, our spirituality around it, and our economic base. Would we behave the way we behave towards each other? And most of us said no. So we are behaving based off, off, off of our conditioning, of generations of conditioning, from, from uh, uh, um, all the things that I named all the way up until the heroin, hero, uh, uh, heroin holocaust and the crack holocaust, unfair housing, being redlined to ghettos, all those stuff matters within the culture. That's why I always say study the other culture, study the Irish, study the Italians, study the other groups and how they behave until they was able to move uh, uh, within uh, today was able to move within this government and what happened to us is the reason why you got educated black people with all kinds of skills working for white corporations and not have and not, us not having our own is the reason why we was inventing things inside these labs uh, 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 that's why I say I, I, I speak about our, our black inventors and uh, uh, um, and the things that we brought to the table but we wasn't able to create an economic surplus for it it was a black man that created cortisone why is he why isn't he a billionaire? Because we were working for white corporations. And this is the part that angers me because I understand this. And you got a lot of other black people to understand this, but we but we look at our own people with vitriol, but 
had we had had our black uh Allison Ball that created the uh cure for Hansen disease, uh had she would have lived long enough and been able to get an economic surplus for that and bring it back to our people, would we be in a condition we in today? CR Patterson. I mean, we created so much stuff that other groups got got billions off of and it did, never came back to our communities. Mm -hmm. It was systematically done. That affects us today. Mm -hmm. And we can't get past that. So we making our choices based off the conditions that we've been placed in. So you redline us into projects and put, place limited resources there. How you expect the people to behave? I'm using common sense. This is why the educated ones that make it out, they, they you know, they fight so hard to make it out because of where they come from, and then they don't come back. George, let me let's talk about those educated ones um, that that make it out. Uh, cause you, you talk about it when you come onto, you know, my panel, you, you notice that a lot of the guys that, that come on or in the comment sections, these guys would be considered, you know, some of the more, you know, wealthier or more talented black guys. Um, these brothers who make it out, it seems that in most parts of many communities, their complaints, um, for even some of my colleagues, my best friends are Dennis. And what he had, what he's told me is, you know, once I finished medical school, which I'm done in 2000, the beginning of 2020, he said, bro, you can't move back to where you're, where you're from, man, because those people, they're not going to you know, accept you to be asking for money, be begging you for shit. Um, and there's really no future because they don't have any respect for people of your magnitude. Um, and a lot of black men or black women who, who, who leave these communities, they feel like they have always been ostracized and the greater society is more appreciative of their talents and their needs. And it's more difficult to come in and work with our people based off how our people treat them. What, what do you say to these, uh, these talented blacks who, who have things to contribute to the black community, um, but figure that there is no opportunity or in a room or no acceptance for them to actually be there? That's very easy. Let's, let, let, let's break this down. Yeah. Okay. Has the dominant society really been nice to educated black people? No. We've seen that we got we have a hundred years of history to see to see it. We've seen our what's happened to our educated people. We got we got all kinds of educated black people all over this country. Where's our economic surplus at for black people? Where's our black corporate structure for black people? Where we do business with the corporate structure? Where's our black towns? See. See, all European education ever did was educate you enough to assimilate into their culture and become them and make you see yourself as less than. That's mm -hmm. all European education has ever done. It's never, ever, ever developed an African or a black nationality or a black culture back into you. It's never instilled that. Because if it did, since W.E.B. Du Bois went, uh, uh, got, got his job at the University of Penn in 1896, by, by 2018, we will have an economic surplus and we still don't. Mm -hmm. Remitting here in Philadelphia, where I'm from, created the first black fraternity in 1906. Where's our economic surplus? Where's our buildings downtown? Why are we still being shot in the street? We have enough educated black people where over the hundred years of history, we could have cleaned up our black community where you don't have the pookies and ray rays. Educated black people in the Congress, uh, 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 and business did not stop the heroin holocaust, nor did they stop the crack holocaust. They didn't have the power to stop these things. Just think of this, O'Shea, and, I, and, and I'm going to be real transparent and honest. And I expect my black people to be real transparent and honest. Black men, since, 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 we, since some of us hit these shores in 1619, right, have mm -hmm. been conditioned to be subordinate to whites. White women and black women have watched black men uh, bow down to white men. We've marched and asked for civil rights. We put on suits and spoke proper English to get jobs from them. We, we've done, we've been put in prison and all kinds of things by white men, right? So psychologically, what do you think that that does to the white woman and the black, and the black woman? Seeing us as men cowed down, have to cow down to white men. We, we, we stood outside municipal buildings asking for civil rights that they took back multiple times. And to this day, to this day, as we know all of this history. 
instead of us fighting to eradicate ourselves from it, we just find a comfortable spot in it by joining the Republican Party, the Democratic Party. Uh, uh, we do all these different things. And I'm trying to tell my people, listen to me. We, we, white men, white, white men wasn't, we wasn't hanging white men from trees. We, white men didn't have to come to us and get civil rights. White men didn't have to uh, uh, fight against Jim. It was us against, it was us fighting them. So psychologically, we've been conditioned to follow them. We've been conditioned to believe that whatever they offer in us is greater than what we will have for ourselves. And all of us are sick and suffer from this shit. So this is the part that we're not realizing. My name is George Macon. Your name is O'Shea Duke Jackson, but we call ourselves African-American. That's not an African name. When you look at when, when you when you when you say your name, you're being subordinate to the white man. So this is the shit that this is the stuff that I try to tell my people. Uh, 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 they call me Hotep nigga. No, no, brother. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, they don't respect you. Why would the white man respect any educated black man that's 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 under his system, nigga? You are less threatening. You're not threatening to him because nigga, you work for me. You ain't trying. You're not trying to compete with me. You're not trying to have a black nationality and compete against me as a man. You're trying to work with me. So you're not threatening. Damn. <laughs> it's hard to ask a question after that one. Uh, guys, let me if ever get the likes up. You know, we're here with the one and only George Bacon. Um, you know, the brother, man, he's charismatic. You need to get caught up in this speech, man. You'd be wanting to give a dollar, man, an offer plate. You know what I mean? So um, shout out to Nyla says Nyla. I mean, I mean e email me after the show. We're gonna get Nyla on here. Uh, so let me let me let me do this real quick. I I, I want to know something, brother. Um, what you're saying is is is, is very true. I would never d deny that. What is it that we can do, in your opinion? Because we have this divide. You, you heard him from, you know, people that's in this community over here um, where a lot of blacks feel disenfranchised right. from black society or the greater black society as a whole. Um, they, 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 they don't want to come back. And there is a division between, let's say, those blacks who are educated, mostly doing well, and, and the blacks that maybe I'm not saying not because you have a lot of blacks who in the, in the, in the, in the society who feel the same way as some of the, you know, these guys are coons, sellouts, things like that. How how do we bridge the gap with other black people who are so emotional when you think different, are so emotional when you have a difference of opinion? How can you work with those people when they're so quick to attack you? And it's just something kind of easier to just kind of separate from those blacks and not even be, um, you know, having a discussion. How can we, how can we work past that? we have to begin to define what it is that we want as black people going forward. That's that's why uh, on the last show the other night when we was talking about black male empowerment and I was saying, okay, if it's black, is it gonna stay black? Are we gonna keep it black? Uh, are, are we are we African-Americans or are we just Americans assimilating into the European culture? We have to define what it is that we're doing because you have black people scattered into different places but when I look at the ancestors and what they fought for, they fought for black rights, civil rights for black people. Uh, Dr. King said, when we come to DC, we come in to get our, our, we come in to get our check. He was talking about black people. Dr. King was fighting for rights for black people, North, the North American Negro. So what I'm saying is our ancestors from Shirley Chisholm to all of the ones that stood in the gap for us to even have this voice today. We have to redefine what it is that we're doing uh, what it is that we want? Are, are, do we want black? Do we want to keep it black? Do we want a black coat? Do we really want a black culture? So until we define that, we can't even sit down and understand what it is that we want to do. Because you got to understand something, O'Shea, at the top of the 20th century, you had you had the same divide. You had Du Bois and, and, and his process of the civil rights movement. You had Garvey with black radical nationalism, which I fall more under. Mm -hmm. You had uh, Booker T. Washington with his conservative views. Where you, know seen, I love, you know I love Booker T. Washington. Yeah, with, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love Booker T. Boy, you know, where, where, where he seen, he seen overt racism, but his thought process was if you just keep your head down and work hard, whites will accept you. And uh, the Boise frowned upon that. And you got to remember, uh, uh, Booker T. was was um, uh, uh, Garvey's mentor. 
And when he died in 1915, Garvey understood that these whites would never accept us, never accept us as an equal. Mm -hmm. And after 100 years history, we've seen that to be true. So my thing is we don't have to hate white people, but we need to build our own structure and do business with the corporate structure. This America is a corporation that other countries come and drop goods off to be consumed. Mm -hmm. And we food for all the other groups because remember, we are we were the slaves. We are the biggest consumers. Everybody eats off of us. We fund everybody else's American dream. Everybody, all other immigrants come to America, come right into the black community, and we fund their American dream. So okay. I'm telling black people, if we want to be black, we want to have a black culture, we're going to have to get the skilled blacks and understand this. So Shay, inside the hood, it's, it's, it's not a large portion of black people wilding out. The majority of black people in the hood get up and go to work every day, too. Yeah, that's it, true. It's highlighted that 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 these that, that the Pookies and Ray Rays is running the black. No, they're not. That's just what's being highlighted. Now, is there is there a problem in the black community? Absolutely. But guess whose job it is to fix it? Us. Mm -hmm. Who fix it about us? Other that's why I'm trying to tell everybody. These other immigrants coming to these into into America, they build up their their people and they do business with the economic structure. Mm -hmm. We got our idiotic selves. We get educated and we assimilate to other people that don't even want us there. We just had an incident here at the University of They just had uh, Alabama playing Alabama State. And the kids, the, frat, the frats put some uh, racist shit up on the Alabama's uh, home racist banners. And a lot of the black people was upset, saying, how could they do this? And I was chairing the white supremacist on. I said, God damn it, white supremacist, I'm glad you did that shit. Keep doing it. You know why I was chairing the white supremacist on? Because I want Negroes to understand that I don't care how much money you got, how much education you got, they were never accept you say it so, again say it again so here. Around, i don't care how much money you got how much education you got they will never accept you or see you as an equal so i was happy that those white supremacists laid those racist banners out to wake you negroes up you while you looking down on your own people they looking down on you they don't want you up there because listen when you up there getting jobs you taking jobs away from them they don't want you up there they, they're just like their fathers and grandfathers man and i keep trying to so what i'm saying to black people is you don't have to be in the black community to financially invest in it and to affect it. You got black people like me that's in the community. Invest in me, goddammit, and let me go fix the community if you don't want to come into the community. But we gotta have we gotta our, our tree branches and tentacles gotta run and they gotta be connected. They gotta they, they gotta be connected. So when you make it out and get educated, you gotta link up with other black people. Everybody black ain't Pookie and Ray Ray. Every black woman ain't ratchet. And we gotta get out. We we say this shit to make excuses to assimilate into other cultures. But these other cultures don't want to, man. They they take a little bit of y'all, but they're not taking they're not taking five hundred thousand of you, motherfuckers. No, <laughs> they take, they take ten to twenty of you. And, and you know what, Let me add on. It's hard to add on to that. You know what I mean? Because y'all know George love to talk, and I love George on these shows because I don't have to send him but just shake my head. You know what I mean? George is like a steam. Him in full circle. You get them on the show, man. They will take you where you need to go. So all you gotta do is sit back and ask one question, and they're gonna they gonna take that they gonna take that and run with it. Let me shout out to the brother man, uh, YPC Pops. Thank you for twenty dollars super chat, and brother Wayman Brown man. He opened for me uh, the other night, and he says, uh, "Thanks, brother George, for the Monday panel replaying later." Thank you, brother Wayman. There was a second show he did doing a really really good job. New talented brother. Thank you so much. Let me kind of talk about this man. Um, I want to just build on the last thing you said. And one of the reasons why I stick at almost all black content and black center content, because I know for a fact living in Poland that how cruel some white people can be um, and how they never really are going to accept you, no matter how much money you have or anything like that. I think they're more likely to do it in this country, but I think that's just the truth. And to be fair to Polish people, they hate everybody, not just black. They do. They hate everybody, man. Like, They'll even tell you to move out the way so they can cuss the Ukraine out. They hate them more than they hate us. Um, so I, I'll give them some credit. But the reason why you know, George, um, like you said, no matter how much you get, if you start making enough money and you go into a white neighborhood, if a lot of you black doctors or black lawyers move into the white neighborhood, them white folks is getting the fuck out of there. And that's the truth. They getting out of there. And that's one thing that I got to be honest to say with you, man. I think that you're absolutely right. White people, I think, in, in, in all honesty, 
um, want nothing to do with us, living by us. They don't mind maybe working with us or having a beer, but they don't want us in their, their neighborhoods. I think that's absolutely true. I think what you're saying to that point is true. And I think brothers should really accept that. But let me talk to you about this real quick. Uh, you heard of my brother, Brandon Tatum. You heard of him, right? Yeah, I, I haven't never heard him talk, though. Yeah, I heard him mention him. Yeah, big, big time YouTuber. I remember when I looked at him, he had 800 subscribers. And I turned around, he didn't got 150,000. Um, right. But he, he's working with a program called uh, a Turning Point USA. You, you heard of Candace Owens? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's she, she used to be pro black, and all of a sudden she went and, like, yeah, yeah, I heard yeah. of it. Well, here's the thing, uh, it's not to disparage them anyway, but um, he mentioned on the, on, the, on the Sunday panel, which you we missed you on the last one. Um, he mentioned that Turning Point USA, um, which is a you know white Republican conservative kind of outlet, they raised about a hundred thousand dollars, um, to focus in on some black issues, and they're doing some things. Inner city ghettos, but all, but, uh, but 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 or and just in the black communities in, in particular. Mm -hmm. But this money comes from white people, and yeah. and it's not funded by black people. So I want to know, in your opinion, what is your, well, how do you feel about um about white people or or not are funding black issue agendas? What do you think? Is there any dangers in that? Um, it's, 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 it's already failed. Because I keep trying to tell people, and I'll say it again, at what point is black men going to be the masters of their own destiny? As long as, long as you're going to the people that's been responsible for oppressing you and creating the conditions for you to even have to go to them to get money, then at what point do you expect to advance? At what point are we going to say as black men, we're going to begin to financially fund our own shit, financially fund our own uh, uh, political parties, financially do our own thing? Until we get to think that way and have the self-love within ourselves and stop the vitriol towards each other and work together. See, see, they created a system to make you see you see. All right. Let me just let me answer it by this way. What is white supremacy? White supremacy is a system to make you see yourself as less than to make you see them as greater. This is why they that's this is why it's a system. White supremacy is not a person. It's a system set in place to psychologically make you see yourselves as less than and them as greater than you. So you'll always be submissive and subordinate to them. That's why they set it in place. It's a mental thing. It's a mental chain that's on your head. So now we go into the Republican Party and we think that we're accepted. But the history has shown, no, you're not accepted. How can you vote your way out of something when they already have rights, uh, uh, laws on the books to protect us? But we think that we're going to put, we think we're going to put certain people in office that we don't financially fund them. We don't have an economic surplus to financially fund our own people to uh, go and do the jobs that we would want because the places where we should make money in our own communities, we're not, we're not creating an economic surplus. Other people are doing that. Dominicans, Chinese, they're, they're creating an economic surplus and funding their own politicians through off of our, off of us. So no, Candace Owens and them is full of shit. And those are the ones that I would call a coon because they know better and they know everything that George Macon is saying. I wouldn't call, see, I'm going to say, I'm going to give you an example. I wouldn't call Xanatos Clutch or Man of Tomorrow and them coons. You know why I wouldn't call them coons? Because at least they have the at least they have the call to come onto the platforms with us. And, and even if we argue, we talk. We have the discussions as men. We 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 are together disagreeing, but we're still talking. These people have totally assimilated to the other side, and they are leading people astray to make them believe that these people actually care about us when they don't. Uh, politically, systematically, and historically. Until we financially fund our own shit, we are always, as black men, going to be considered boys to white men. And white men know this shit. Because white men ain't asking us for money to do a motherfucking thing. White men ain't asking us for voting shit to do a goddamn thing. White mm -hmm. men asking us not to kneel so they can continue to make money off our black asses. White men is asking you to dribble that basketball down the goddamn court and shuck and jive and sing. He asking you to come to work with a suit on. He asking you to not be as aggressive and don't think of black nationality to make you seem less aggressive and whereas though, whereas though you can be uh, 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 more, more, more friendly within his system. That's what he's asking black men to do. He's not asking black men to think independently and work together because that would be considered radical. And I, and, and I don't, for the life of me, I don't understand. So that's why I said, I'm not coming on here to pick on anybody. Cause I don't think, like I said, I don't think the Xanatos and them are, are coons. I just think that a lot of us are confused and misinformed. 
and we're missing we're dropping the ball we're missing the boat so let me let me kind of get to this point you know because a lot of people again it's, it's, it's about black people creating our own enemies i asked him yesterday um brandon you know you know malcolm x said that you know if, if you allow white people to fund your agendas um then they will ultimately control it and, and brandon came up with a uh, a pretty decent rebuttal to that i believe what he said was well white people have those that didn't agree with slavery they helped blacks could could black people have gotten out of slavery without the help of other whites who are sympathetic when Harriet Tubman was delivering slaves to the North, who were they staying with? Abolitionists, white people. Um, white people were very adamant in um, voting rights, uh, all of those things. So, you know, white people have, you know, white people started Howard University. He didn't say that, but, you know, obviously white people did fund some of the, or, or help fund Tuskegee and things like this. Um, what do you say when he talks about, you know, and, and again, this is a, a brother who is, um, in you know in the greater conservative you know society right now you know with the non non black platform and these are his positions some of them I mean it's hard to kind of at least for me when I'm thinking about it well it makes sense what do you say to somebody that talks about you know yeah white people have always been sympathetic to blacks and that's how blacks are able to get their rights things like that I honestly honestly I would honestly he's he's a he's a super coon that if we ever I'm, I'm gonna be honest O'Shea I'm gonna be totally honest okay. He, He's a super coon that if we ever got ourselves together as black people, he should be considered a traitor. And I'm going to tell you why. Let me explain something. So let me explain something to the people in the chat room. When you deal with the, the, the Tuskegee, Andrew Carnegie, Andrew Carnegie was a guy that was funding the Tuskegee experiment. But Andrew Carnegie was a staunch racist, white supremacist, and eugenics. He supported the eugenics society, Andrew Carnegie. Also, all, also with Henry Ford. So we got to also understand that Andrew Carnegie was instrumental with Madison Grant, Woodrow Wilson, and the racist progressive aristocracy. That that that's a precursor, or that was the beginning to the so-called conservative movement. So we got to stop playing. We got we have to stop playing these games. White people have funded things that they felt like would benefit them. So when you when you deal with Procter Gamble and 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 the Rockefeller Foundation, they was the ones that funded Planned Parenthood. And they got black, they got black pastors and black leaders like the Boise and them to be on board with it. Uh uh um uh uh the pass around rhetoric to make us voluntarily uh 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 get down with the Planned Parenthood. So and these was all funded behind the scenes by white people. So a lot of things that we thought benefited black people was actually funded behind the scenes by powerful elite white people, and they had devilish demonic uh uh, uh intentions behind it. So they can they can pass that shit along to people that's not educated. But for us educated black people to understand our history, that shit don't work with George. Get the fuck out of here with that. That's why that's why I don't disrespect Booker T. Washington, but I'm not a big fan of Booker T. Washington. Booker T. was playing politics. I understand what he was doing. He got in bed with the white supremacists and the eugenics to actually try to help develop black people. But they was never in line to help develop black people because where's the development of black people? While he was funding you, he was also complicit in, in, in people being hung in the South at the same time. So, like, we got to stop playing these games. These groups, these organizations, these 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 empires, and these corporate structures that are multi-billion-dollar corporate structures are built off the blood in the back of our fucking people, man. And if we have any integrity or any respect, we will honor our ancestors and want to be independent of these people for the sake of our, for the respect and love of our ancestors. Why would with these fucking people we got it we make enough money where we can do our own shit why would you trust them i mean well, i'm not understanding let me let me do this let me uh and i'll get to roscoe's comment in a minute but so why has this we're not going to read that so basically why have you not called out the pastors black pastors coons they have the power and the money to bring people together as political force so we'll address that but let me kind of talk about this real quick um and shout out to the brother roscoe but i want to talk about you said why can't we do our own shit we shouldn't trust them. But here's another problem that we have, brother, especially with black men, as we talk all the time, you know, we don't trust each other, you know? Um, so how, I mean, that's one of the things I wanna know. Why is it, I mean, cause obviously as a, you know, I, I'm, 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 I've known you for like a, like not even a month and in that month's time, you told me 
um, you know, offline, not to be, you know, that you that you've been featured more on this channel or on these channels than even on some of the other channels. Um, and, and we just have that connection. So I, we have that trust already. But why don't you think that, and you know, and you looked out for me also, me bringing you on your platform. But why is it that other blacks can't trust each other? And so, you, you know what I mean, where they can do things in the community, what they have, we have the money. You know, we do have um, the spending power. Even black men as a group, we have over five or $600 billion spending power. So why is it that we can't do it within our own communities when we have the reasons we have the money? Well, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. Let me just say this real quick, though. Yeah, uh, Melanite, drug dealers are coons, too. So that's the answer to your question. I, when I was in the street, I was a fucking coon. I didn't realize I was a coon, but I was a George making was a coon. So I, I, when I was running wild, messing fucking chicks, getting money, doing all kinds of destroying my community, I was cooning for the white man. I was caught up in the nigga trap. So that your question is answered. Yeah. Now get into what you were saying. Um, the problem that we have is let's go back to come forward now. So that way we can understand uh, why, why, why we're dealing with this. It's like we walk in the room and we see the room fucked up. We judge the room based off of what we saw, but now we have to analyze and, and do the research to understand how the room got this way. So now the question that you asked is why we can't stick together. So let's go backwards. We can't stick together because they kept us, they, they made sure that they kept us out of the economic loop for generations. When you're able to pass down generational wealth and forge communities, those communities will, you will build your morale and your spirituality based around your, all your spirituality, your economics, and your morality is supposed to all go together as a trinity, as a three. And that's going to be built around a community base. When they, when they, when they burned our cities down and forced us to assimilate into their cultures and throw away our communities, we even lost, we lost our camaraderie with each other and our brotherhood because we was like crabs in a barrel, all trying to be accepted into the dominant society. We lost our, I helped my brother up when my brother is down. That was systematically done. See, they didn't, they didn't desegregate uh, 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 the communities just to be nice to you. No, that was, that, that was for their economics. That was for them to get you to assimilate into their culture and become them, not have your own identity. See, because if we'd have had our own communities, O'Shea, and been doing things black, we would have a black identity. We would have a black culture. We would have a black economics. But the reason why we can't work together because that was systematically taken from us. So now we're like crabs in a barrel. Everybody's trying to get theirs. I got mine, nigga. Why you get? Why you can't get yours? We don't have any any type of love for each other or trust. Because business, generations of business brings trust, admiration, respect for each other. This is how other groups are able to work like that. That's why when a Mexican move on your block in five years, it's 50 Mexicans. Because he has a mindset to go back and get his people and bring them in. Right. Because, because, because they don't have that interrupted history like we had. Yeah. We're the food for the other groups. So my thing is when George is speaking... I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just trying to wake our people up. I don't care if you educated or the nigga with the tattoos and the gun on your face. All of us are connected, man. Okay. And, that, and that's what we got to realize. Let me let me do this, guys. And, and guys, do me a favor because I forgot to put George's. Um, uh, for those people who want to subscribe to George Macon, um, I will put the link in the description to go subscribe to his channel. Do me a favor and press one. We'll put the links out there for you to subscribe to George's channel. Um, but again, George, let me let me go to one thing. I'm going to uh, read out some super chats. Shout out to my brother, the Uber guy. He's definitely going to be doing a show with my brother, man. He's a really good YouTuber, many subscribers. He can let me borrow some. But let me let me get back to this, George. I understand your point about our assimilation and stuff like that. But just even right here on YouTube, this stream in itself, you know, you see, you know, my channel, people ch channels like Feel That Buy Show, people like you. Why are we, you know, Dr. Moon, Wode Maya, why are we able to work together outside of the excuses? We're not using that as an excuse why me and you can't work together. Feel from the advice show, um, other brothers, you know, Black Ice TV, and, you know, we all have differences of opinion. See the Black community very differently on opposite spectrums. So how is it that me and you and other people that are like-minded even though we want to help the community, we can leave all the other bullshit aside, religion and politics and all that stuff. We are always working together damn near every day to try to help our people with good content for our people and trying to, you know, do things to, you know, uplift our folks in the community. So why don't we use that as an excuse? But then we give these other niggas, I'm sorry, <laughs> these other 
these other niggas, <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. I'm about to back up now because you know I can go in. I'll be, be, be cool. No, go in. No, go ahead in, oh, man. No, I mean, no, I had my chance yesterday. Nyla in here. I got to save some for our show when me and Nyla go in together. But <laughs> why, why is it that, you know, the brothers that well, you Nyla, see. Hey, hey, oh, Nyla is pretty, ain't she? God yeah. damn. Yeah, and but her, <laughs> you would never think that somebody that talk as bad as she do look like she do. They always say, I yeah, went to Nyla. talking Nyla. a lot of shit. Hey, say, I went to Nala page and looked on the and looked on the uh and looked at the picture. She made me call the Lord. I said, "Dang, Jesus, <laughs> white Jesus." <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, 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 but why, why are we? Um, we're not using that as an excuse. So, why are our other brothers who are caught in the bullshit? Why are we giving them the excuse to be on the fuckery when we're not using that as an excuse? This is easy. This is a layup. Everything I say is easy. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna explain why though. Why I'm saying it. Okay. When you look at other communities, right? Ninety percent of all ethnic groups is asleep. If the ten percent are the ones that control the communities, they're the ones that come together and they put the economics together. They got. They put the schools together. They put uh, the politics together. The problem that you have in the black community in America is we're portrayed. We're portrayed in the, by, the, by this racist media as a certain way. And they only show a, diff, a, a certain demographic of black people. Okay. They only show a small demographic of us. And, that, and it's portrayed to the world as if that's the black people. Um, so why, am I, why, why are you saying this, George? The reason why I'm saying this is the conscious black people, the ones that are woke, the ones that are skilled, it's our job to build our community and be at the forefront of our community. When you see the Chinese people, uh, 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 um, and you see the way that their community re- being ran is being ran by a small percentage of the educated, economically astute Asians. Okay. They're creating economic surplus and education for their other people. All Asian people ain't woke. Some of them are dumb as shit, drunks, degenerates, everything, but they're just not portrayed in the media that way. But the ones that you see that's controlling the economics and the education are the small percentage of the woke ones that came together and built the community. It's like that in every community. The problem with black people, because we've been fooled for all these other groups, is we've been conditioned because we wasn't able to create, to, to maintain communities, to assimilate into everybody else's community and not build our own. That's why I've been saying that black man, black woman, educated ones, get your asses back down here. Okay. Let's build our own communities. Let's financially invest in our own people right. and build it up. Because everybody's making a trillion dollars off of us but us. How the fuck we not making the money off of our own people and everybody else is? Yeah. So, so guess so what happens is we become we actually become the Pookie and Ray Rays and don't even know it because we're smart enough to come together. We're smart enough to come together. How can we not smart enough to come together to rebuild our communities? Mm-hmm. Somebody else coming. See, look, watch this, O'Shea. We say that we're afraid to go into the community because we're gonna get killed, right? Mm-hmm. But the Chinese ain't afraid to go into Chicago and open up a Chinese store. <laughs> no, he not. It will beat you It will beat the fuck out you too because and beat you up. So, so, so what's our excuse? What's our excuse? <laughs> Those are excuses that we make, and George is not letting us off the hook. I'm not. It's, we have to, what I'm saying is, when you see the Arab, the Asian, the Latino, and I know this firsthand because I come from Latino and African-American culture. I have both, for my mother, man, and my, my father, man, on the other side. What I'm telling you is, the economically, the economic uh, intelligent ones, are the ones that create the structure for the communities, okay. and then they hire and fire their own people. So now, when you, when you, when we have this economic surplus for black people, where we giving it to everybody else, we got to invest it back into our communities. You don't have to live on 39th Street in order to be effective in your community. You could, but you got to financially invest back, like everybody else do. What's your excuse for the fucking Korean being right down in Brooklyn or East Detroit or Philly? He ain't afraid. Why are you afraid? You nigga, you from there? His excuse is O'Shea, because European education will never, ever educate you to have a black nationality. Because if the 50 million black people in America ever developed a black nationality, it would destroy this economy. Mm-hmm. Because all the immigrants that come into our community to make money, they would no longer make money. We, we move the crowd. We feed the economy. And we, and we got to understand that. And everybody else is making money off of us but us. So I would tell the man of tomorrow's, the man of tools clutch, the billion, do- the billion dollars that's supposed to be in your hand is in your own community. You watching everybody else make it. No, I, I definitely agree with all that. Let me, uh, let me take the time out to, uh, you guys know, I, I'm hearing in the, in the chat, 
Now, one of our moderators has a birthday, so I want to take a, a time out to acknowledge Young Jay. And it's so funny, man. Young Jay used to hate George, man. Woo! <laughs> young J two one six man, he was calling you everything but a child. You know, Young J, he's known as a moderator, uh-huh. man. He's the most uh-huh. <laughs> blatantly disrespectful. He be calling motherfuckers all type of names. He's just really mean with it, man. But he just said, "I subscribe to Brother George," but it is his birthday today, and we won't let yeah. our brother know, man, that we really love yeah, him. That's, yeah, yeah. that's my man. We go. That's my man. We go back and forth in the chat all the time. <laughs> tell you, man, he, <laughs> that's he my just, man. He's a crazy guy, man, but he really do care about the brothers, man. We want to tell him happy birthday, brother. You know, I really do, we really do love you, God, God, I really, But you be going ham, man, on these on these people, timing motherfuckers out, and you doing all type of weird shit. But happy birthday to the brother. We're going to be acknowledging him as, as long as he's on the stream. This is his day. So we want to thank him for, for his service, man, to the Mod Squad, the timeout <laughs> team. Uh, but let, let, let's kind of talk about this, and I'm going to read out some super chats. Um, to 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 some of the people here, George. I know you got you got about at least twenty more minutes for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this is actually the first time. You know, I have to tell you about George, right? The first time I offered him to lead off. He this is this is kind of how thoughtful he was. He actually, if you remember, he didn't take the lead off for himself. Uh, he brought in a brother named Black Ice TV, which. <laughs> Which is, and you guys know on my Sunday shows, those are the premier fucking shows. And I was like, like, damn, bro, you're gonna bring in another dude on a on a Sunday rumble as a leadoff? And he did. So that just goes to show you, man, he was willing to share his spotlight with somebody else. Um, let me kind of go over some people. Um, Big Duke, thank you for the five-hour super chat. Um, now Moses Jenkins has a question. You know, he always has a very interesting question because you know Moses has that, you know, he's a his IQ is way up there, and I'm over here down here. Yeah, Moses is too smart. Moses yeah. too smart for me, man. Moses too smart for me. He he when he starts talking, I I got I got to rewind it. Hold on, Moses. Rewind yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when he because he, he start in, you know in, in, in intercalating all of those words and shit, you be like, <laughs> but that's that Morehouse shit. You know, you niggas is always <laughs> saying some big ass. You this nigga know we from Del Paso Heights. You know me and him. Went to the same high school, went to the same church, Mount Calvary. Y'all know that we had that they had that classic fight in 1989 where the pastor got caught cheating and everybody started fighting in the church. That actually really happened. That ain't, I actually did a story on that on YouTube. We got like 300,000 views. I took it down. But they was um, fighting in the church? They was- hell yeah, they was fighting. I don't know. It <laughs> was a fight, nigga. It was a fucking brawl. They had to end the service. Oh, shit. They wasn't passing enough offering, huh? No, nah, nigga. The, the, the pastor got caught. Well, fucking, uh, yes, I went to Grant High School. I sure did, Class 99. Uh, got caught fucking around in the church. The woman mm-hmm. went and sat in the wife's spot. The wife went and grabbed, this is like right by the offer song, and whooped her ass, and then everybody, then you know how people started like maybe like bumping into each other on accident, and then, and then, and then everybody started <laughs> fighting. It was one, it was a royal rumble in the church, man. And my grandma wig was getting ready to fall off, so we had to get her up out of there. But, um, but yeah, so he wants to know, how do black people, um, do we really make our own money? How? Okay, so that's one of those trick questions. You know how he is. So look, he paid, look, 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 can we can we say, uh, and Moses, do you remember that fight they had at that church? Go ahead, go ahead. We was about like eight or nine years old at the time, but go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I don't, no, I don't think we make our own money as a group. Individually, some of us might make some money, but as a group, uh, as, as, as uh, uh, Negro people in America, no. Because the quicker we make it, we, we give it right back. We don't have something that sustains that sustains us to a point where we can have we have our own black we have our own black communities where we control the local politics within the communities. We have a black uh, uh, we have black dentists, black doctors, black insurance companies, uh, uh, black schools with black teachers, ran administrations being ran by black people. We don't have that, so no, we don't make our own money. Okay, okay. Let me say Green Machine. We need a disciplinary system to keep us accountable in line. There needs to be heavy penalty for going against the group. Thank you, brother Green Machine. Um, let me kind of read. Um, let's see. Juan de la Cruz. Thank you, brother. Great show. O'Shea and George. Wake the hell up. Dollar, dollar 11. Let me offset this, George, to your point. We go back to the regular uh, um, commentary. You guys know I was just in Africa uh, on a three country tour. And the same things that George is talking about, if you go to Africa, you'll notice that there's a lot of parallels to what's happening in the black community. If you go to um, the black community, you'll see Arab stores, you'll see Indian stores, you'll see everybody else besides us, for the most part, running the economy. 
And this is the same thing you see in Africa. Every almost every country that I've been to in Africa, you see these other groups. And again, a lot of us say, "Oh, I'm not going to Africa. Oh, I don't want to do this or that." And then you see these people who are coming over to Africa. You know, it's only like maybe less than fifty or sixty thousand Indians in Uganda, but they own like eighty percent of the country's business entrepreneurship and pay the most in tax. So it just goes to show you what a little bit of group can do um, in, 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 in entering markets that you're afraid to enter into. So I just wanted to, 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 to back that up. And what you're talking about is what I saw, not only in black America, but you do see that in Africa. Y'all get the likes up. Um, let me talk to you about this, George. With, with us as a group of black men, because you know this is what I focus on. Um, black men feel, and, and here's the thing, I think a lot of the people who leave the communities that have like the most disgruntled partitions about the community tend to be more black men than black women. Um, a lot of black men say that they feel in the community that um, they are not respected. Um, I had a brother that was on last night that's a school teacher or counselor in Atlanta. Um, he actually left the black school that he was at because he felt like um, many of the administration, especially some of the women, uh, were treating, trying to treat to some of the black employees in the school district like as, as they, they were less than, as they were nobody. Um, a lot of black men feel like they're second class citizens in the black community. They're only supposed to be there not to lead, but just to do whatever the fuck women tell them to do. And so a lot of our, our best people, I think, that can help the community. Um, and this is not to be offensive, but I think there are black men. And these are the brothers that um, are, 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 are disgruntled, whether it's with African-American women, whether it's with certain attitudes and, you know, they figure like, you know, how can we come back when there's a civil war between the matriarchy and feminism in black America? How can we come back in and, 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 and work with these women who don't want to work with us? Um, you know, mentor these kids and these kids are had by other niggas and they want us to take care of them, you know, what about the issues that black men have and how they see the community? What's their position in wanting to rebuild the black community with some women they find to be undesirable? Well, uh, this is another layer. <laughs> it's all easy. I want, to, I, I want all the black men okay. that's watching this, uh, um, the 243 people watching right now, all the black men that's in the chat room right now, I want y'all to listen to what George is about to say. Even if you disagree, just understand what I'm trying to tell you guys. Because I'm not attacking the black man. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to build your morale and uplift you. I want you to understand something. The civil war that we're having is not with the black woman, nor is it with the white woman. The civil war that we, that we are having is with this white man. Understand something, black man. Please hear what George is trying to tell you. I said this yesterday on my page. If you go onto my page on my live stream, I broke this thing down. Take the white woman on this side, take the black woman on this side and put the black man in the middle. Our women have watched us, watched us be hung, work in cotton fields, come out of slavery, meet with, meet with white generals uh, uh, to ask for land, to act, actually ask for land. At, at, what point, at what point since we've encountered whites here in America have black men been able to be a man? independent of white men and not up under their jurisdiction and their law and their rule. So, and I want y'all to stay with me. I want y'all to understand what I'm saying. Don't get emotional. Just listen to what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not taking women's side. I want y'all to hear me. Okay. At what point have black men have been independent of his own, on his own throne with his own government, independent in this country, independent of white men? At what point have we controlled the courts? Uh, 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 um, when, when, when we didn't have to go march and ask for civil rights and the white women watched us be subordinate to her man we went and we asked for civil rights we fought against Plessy versus Ferguson we fought the Dred Scott case uh, coming up into more moderate times we fought <clears throat> with Jim Crow we fought against the, uh, the unfair housing thing under, under Franklin um, we was uh, uh, fucked up in the eugenic society we was always subordinate to this white man. And I want y'all to understand in the war that they declared on us, our women sat and watched that shit. Our women, our women who we've been over generations have been uh, uh, wounds that we came out of. 
who we are supposed to protect have watched us for generations be subordinate and always lose these fights to this white man. We assimilate it into their culture. And this is the part that I'm trying, this is the part that I'm trying to explain to black men. These, this, these white motherfuckers have been kicking our ass, O'Shea, for a long time. And the white woman has seen it. And you know what they've done to us, O'Shea, as black men? They conditioned us to believe that the only uh, uh, great thing that we have is not our intellect or our head, but our dicks. Black men with big dicks. That's the only, that's the only power that we have. Man, I fucked the shit out of that woman last night. But did you fuck the shit out of that deal, black man, to stop gentrification in your neighborhood? They conditioned us to, to believe that the power that we have is in our sex organ and not our minds. To be control of our own destiny. This don't have nothing to do with women. Take the white women out, take the black women out. As black men, we got a voting rights act in, 60, in 64, and 64 with permission to vote from fucking white men. This is what I'm trying to tell y'all. When have we, as black men, as black men, been in control of our own our self law master? White men didn't have to come to us and get permission to vote. White men didn't have to come to us to get permission to uh, 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 to, to say we should wear suits or how we should behave within their corporate structure. They told us how to behave, and guess who is that? A black woman. So so even when she doesn't, even when she's not, even when she doesn't think she's disrespecting you, she is because she's been conditioned not to see you. Not to see you is great. When that black woman get out of line, guess who gives her housing, food, shelter, and clothing? The white man do. She don't. She she can't come to us and get it because we ain't in control of our own destiny as black men. We don't control industries, and this is the problem. And this, yeah, the, uh, this is and this is what this is what I'm trying to. This is what I, this is all I'm trying to tell my brothers. At some point, we got to start thinking independent and saying, take the women, take the white women, the black women. Everybody out of the equation and say, what do black men want? We tired of fucking being under the foot of this fucking cracker, this white man, and we're going to develop something for ourselves. And when we do it, the proper women will show up. We tired of marching. We shall overcome. What do you think the white man, what do you think the white man is, is looking at us when he's watching us marching, standing outside some uh, municipal, uh, uh, municipal buildings saying, stop shooting my sons? How you think he viewing us as, as fucking men? But if I step on your shoe, you'll whoop my ass. We got it. We 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 got it. We we got it. We got to start thinking as black men the way that white man think. White man ain't trying to be subordinate to no motherfucking body. He want to rule the world. He want to be a ruler. We want to find a humanity in everybody and forgive and just find a comfortable spot in the fucking world. Despite us, despite us being fucked up. And this is why our women don't respect us the way that they should, because they see us be subordinate to a whole nother fucking man. So guess what? They the black women are subordinate to white men. Because, because her man is subordinate to him. And that's just real talk, man. So I mean, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. Guys, do me a favor. Um 267 people watching right now, and we don't even have a lot of likes, only 104. So I would appreciate it. And I thank everybody for watching. But please, let's engage the likes because the likes are free. It's real, free. Real, 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 real quick, Ocean. Peace, yeah. Ashley. I always, watch, I always watch your videos. I like your commentary. Ashley W. Yeah, and hold up, Sim. I think I see my brother hold up on um, Dinus Amir, search for Hulu's channel. So, brother, that's his channel right there for those people who want to um, uh, basically subscribe to him right there. So that's. George's channel right there. Let me ask you this, man. I understand what you're saying. It makes perfect sense. But a black man, although they may understand that um, and, and, and hear what you're saying, that's still not a real, real, real quick, I mean, real quick O'Shea. See how stupid they are? They say, so George wants to be a white man now. This is how stupid some of our people are. How, <laughs> who said that? How does, who, me, who how does that? I want to be... Uh, 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 D S D S O eight D whatever. How how do I want to be a white man by what I said? Fuck. Why would I want to be a white? I'm trying to tell I you that. No, I have no idea how you got that. Yeah, we've been conditioned to to, to, to be under these motherfuckers. When when have we been? I, I want somebody to tell me when when have we been independent? Our own independence under the white man got his own government. He got his own rules. He gave us rights and took it back. When when, when we going to be in power? When he try to do that shit, we say fuck you, motherfucker. We ain't fucking with that. We don't, when have we been, matter of fact, in layman's terms, and I'll rest, when have we been in position to treat the white man the way we treat each other? 
I wait for somebody to answer that. Well, let me let me ask you this because again, you know, it, it, it makes sense what you're saying. And I don't I don't necessarily disagree with it. But again, everybody moves off incentive. You have a lot of black men who are still disgruntled with what's going on. Um with I mean, even you have brothers talk about these things. So a lot of black men are looking to do other things, you know, maybe if it's going to, to Dominican Republic and get a woman or a cube or something like that. Um, because they really feel that right now, as we're trying to create identity for ourselves, you know, we cannot achieve um, this particular community with African-American women when they feel that they have the power. So some people suggest, and I'm kind of, I'm with them, you know, black men do their own thing that want to build and stuff like that and do it for themselves and then let the women do what they're going to do. And then whoever, you know what I'm saying, acquiesces to each other, find it. A lot of black men are are, are motivated by um, 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 how can I say this? Motivated by an incentive. So a lot of brothers saying a lot of women have too many kids. A lot of women are overweight. A lot of women have bad attitudes. And and how can these black men want to build communities for women that are in this particular situation? And that's what I'm trying to ask. Well, well, I'll say this for me. Honestly, I can't work with them kind of black men because those black men. I'm gonna tell you why. Those black men are, are, are have, they have mental issues as well, because that's not all black women. Because you got a lot of black, you got a lot of black men that are that that are selfish, fucked up, uh, uh, um, they're weak. They don't have, they don't have, they don't have that male and in, in, the, the, the in, internal fortitude to fight and work their way out of certain things. A lot of our men, a lot of our men has been raised by women. They 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 don't they never had a male structure in the house. They don't know who their fathers is, grandfathers is. They never had, they don't understand what male authority authority is. They don't know how to create and use their logic to create realities that they want for themselves. So a lot of black men, you see that they just complain. Now, our uh, women is out, see what I just broke down is the reason why our women are out of control. Women, let me tell you something about women. I don't care what color they are. Women follow the males that's in power. Whenever males that's in power on the block, though those are who the women are going to follow. Mm-hmm. This, this feminist bullshit. Feminism is okay by elite white males. That that's who funds feminism. That's who allows feminism to go into his movies and to his media. White uh, these women don't control media. Media is controlled by elite white males that that allows chaos to ensue in order for them to have order. So what I'm trying to tell y'all is what I'm trying to tell black men is the women is in the state that that they're in because we've been fucked up and we are out of power. So a lot of our women are out of pocket. So when black men understand what it is that they're supposed to be doing as men and be author- authoritative figures the way this white man is, then we'll be we'll, we'll have the right women show up. This is what I'm trying to tell my brothers. A lot of our women is fucked up because they're not protected by us because we're not in power. The system, listen, when you see these black, let's think of this, O'Shea. When you see these black women acting a fool on TV, who's, who's allowing that to go into his TV? Everything that you see on TV has to be okay. 25 years ago, when Minister Society came out, black men, black men was considered, black men was considered uh, public enemy number one. Black men was considered, uh, 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 what they call, what did they call us? Uh, um, um, uh, uh, they called us um, America's Nightmare. The black man was, they had a picture of old dog with two tech nines and shit with, a, with dreadlocks uh, 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 on a cover. Old dog. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and the black woman, though, 25 years ago, that was Claire Huxtable. That was the mom from, uh, and the mom from Family Matters and all that shit. She was the greatest thing that ever happened to the black community. She was soul food. She was big mama. Now look at now look at the way they now look at the way they portraying a black woman on TV, because they already destro- uh, destroyed the character of the black man in America around the world. Now they seek to destroy the black woman, and because they control the media outlets. But I'm trying to tell my brothers that's called war declared on the black family. And if somebody come into my house right now trying to declare war on my house, I'm gonna kill them. As black men, we have to understand that we are our families are under attack. We are at war. Our women are vulnerable because we are fucked up and we won't come together and stick together. If we come together and stick together and say, no, white man, you can't do that shit no more. And we tell the sisters, dig this head. 
We got we we owning this shit now. We building this shit up. Either you down or you out. We ain't got to that position yet because you can't even get ten niggas to agree on something. You know what the white man did? They used to destroy and kill each other up in Europe for generations. Then they figured it out. In order for them to take over the world, we got to come together. They had tribal war warfare everywhere. Study European history. Then they they had World War One. They formed the League of Nations. When that fell, they formed the the UN, the United Nations. And then they went around the world and carved up Africa like it was a fucking uh, a, 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 a pie. And they've been in power ever since. Black men can't figure this shit out. And that's why our women suffer. Our women is out of control because we are under control of this demonic fucking capitalistic system that we have no say so in as a group. Let me let me um read out some of the chat. Shout out to Brother Rain Knights. I think the black community deserves a conservative color case such. My brother Rain, thank you so much. Black Adam, white women have surpassed the white men as far as wealth in this country through feminism. Look at it, white women come up, black women help them destroy it even worse than slavery. Shout out to brother Black Adam. Um, India, XOXO, I love your channel and panel topics. I want you to know that I love and support black men only as a professional single black woman because my father loves and supports me first. Wow, thank you so much, India. That was a very great comment. I really appreciate you for that uh, super chat. Um, let me let me ask you this, brother uh, George. Again, um, and I, I see this. I was telling you about a brother who made a bit of this video about me a little earlier. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 off something just as little as somebody timing the nigga out. I'm gonna um, beat him up. I'm gonna kick his ass. Yeah, man. You know, we we. But again, as far as black men not being able to agree on stuff, let's talk about that because this is something that I talk about a lot. I know a lot of the brothers. Maybe they may be getting tired of it. But me and you, like I said, I use me and you as an example. We don't necessarily agree on a lot of things. Uh, me and Anthony, Brian, Logan don't uh, agree um, on a whole lot of things. But how can black men, um, you know, even though we have not been trained to kind of work together, um, and a lot of us may or may not be missing, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, being raised by a dad. I know I have a very strong fad a father uh and, and grandfather that's helped me in my life to to see men a little bit differently how can these brothers overcome that when they don't have a male aspect how do we uh start trying to even have the conversation to even have a conversation where you can disagree and still work and try to work together and kind of rebuild that black male trust how do we do that as black men well, I'll say this because I'm I'm looking at the chat and they, they say I'm gonna answer your question. How do we create this power? They said the black mammy syndrome is real. I want all y'all men in the chat room to listen. You know why the black mammy syndrome is real? Because white men created a system set in place to make our women see uh, to make us inconsistent and our women see our see us as less than because the white man provides everything for her. So until you till we work together to get back in power to get our women back to our side then that's just the way it's going to be. Because I keep trying to tell y'all, women follow powerful men, strong men. Y'all don't get it. So it's like, it's, some of y'all, I can't explain it to you because you'll never get it. Because y'all don't know what black male authoritative figures are. But y'all follow that white man. So so let me answer this question. Okay. The thing is, the thing is, O'Shea. The thing is, O'Shea. We, 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 um, we have to we have to understand that we've been conditioned to be separate from each other. Because when you when you get black men, I, I'll say it this way. When I when I um when I when I was um when I was in the game, right? You know, it was easier for me to get black men to do illegal activity than to get black men to come together. And, I, and I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay. When I was in the game, I can get brothers, man. Listen, you know, I go out of town, come back, listen, let's get this money. You know, we'll do anything for each other. Uh, go to jail, don't snitch on each other. Shit, we shared everything. We even shared women. Like, we did everything together. It was it, The crazy thing is, as crazy as it sounds, it was a real, it was a real, it was a strong brotherhood. We had a strong bond. We got money together. We we shared women together. We did everything, everything we damn near did, we did together. But when I, when, when I started, when I went to prison, I come home and I begin to change my life. And I began to deal with real estate and go into different places and, and deal with different demographics. I seen when I said, brothers, come on, let's co-op, let's put our money together, let's let's buy this, let's get that. And all of a sudden the trust wasn't there, O'Shea. Y'all trust, y'all, 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 y'all trust me when we had the bricks. 
we're doing illegal shit. Why? So you, you call a meeting and get 10 brothers together and say, everybody put 100,000 in. Oh, oh, man, I don't know about that, man. That's not going to work. Oh, man. Uh, uh, why you got to be the one to be the leader? Oh, why you got to be? Well, wait a minute. Like, I brought the idea to the table. What's well, this? Or, you know, we 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 can't we can't work together to create the realities that we want. So I'm so the gist of what I'm trying to tell my brothers in the chat room. The reason why our women is out of control and the reason why shit is so fucked up because it's black men. We can't work together to create the realities that we want. When we work together to create the realities that we want, you'd be surprised the type of women we'll have in our life. When, when we stand on righteous foot and with our chests up, our confidence up, and our economics, our, 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 our economics together, our brothers would be surprised the type of women that'll show up. I'll be surprised. Right now, you're complaining now, but we're not, we not standing on righteous footing. We fucked up. We're, support, we're still supporting to this white man. And that's why we're in the conditions that we're in. That's all I'm trying to say to y'all. That's the only thing I want y'all to understand, man. We can't, we can't, we can't come together. I'm telling you, when I was doing illegal activity and I come through with the bands or the NSX, my brother say, damn, man, how you get that? I want to get down. Oh, he get down quick. <laughs> or they see you with the, the chick that everybody want to fuck and she getting in your car. God damn, homie, what's up, man? You, you know, this is the stuff because we enamored with that type of lifestyle. But any, anything that we can get that's going to sustain us for generations that's built on solid foot and solid rock, we don't trust it. And you know why we don't trust the O'Shea? Because they made sure that our grandfathers and great-grandfathers was never able to pass down generational wealth. Yeah. This was systematically done. So it's inside our minds, our heads. We don't respect each other, nor do we have to trust with each other in order to do it. Other groups do. That's why I keep trying to tell my brothers in the chat. When the Mexican move on your block in five years, it's 50 Mexicans. Yeah, that's true. With each other. They work for each other. They stay supporting to each other. They want for their brother what they want for their self. As black men, we don't want it. So take the woman, take the woman out of the equation. Take the black woman ain't even here right now. I'm talking about black men. I'm a black man. I know what I'm talking about. Can't no brothers tell me I'm wrong. We don't work with each other. And when we do, we always trying to screw each other over. We trying to fuck each other's woman. We trying to look good amongst each other. We trying to show uh show each other, uh, uh uh show out on each other. We trying to like we, we we trying to overrun each other, everything. We don't have the love for each other, we don't have a black brotherhood, a love for each other, man. And that's what I'm trying, that's what I'm trying to tell my brothers. That's the problem that we're running into. That white man, they disagree with each other on a lot of shit, but you know what they agree on? Stand in power. <laughs> That's what that white man agree on. They fight in their countries, but they agree on staying in power and keeping you under the under their fucking feet. And we ain't figured that shit out yet. That's why. That's why I study warfare. I study our people. That's why I can come onto channels with people with black men that have uh, uh, diametrically opposed views to me, but I can still talk to them and work with them because I understand warfare. I need these people on my side. They need me. White people work, white, white men work with groups that they hate, but they work together to stay in power. We ain't figured it out, man. Let me let me ask this before I, I, I read this. Some of the others who just thank you, Iran and uh, Brother Major Payne. Black men can, can't complain about women when we don't build anything for ourselves. Thank you for the super chat. And Brother Rain Nice, Brother I'll show you the community needs rules and morals to abide by, not opinions. Thank you again, Brother Iran. And guys, do me a favor. Our brother George is here. I'm gonna read the other ones here. Um, guys, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do him a favor. You know, he came over here. It's nice to speak to us today. Let us um, subscribe to the brother. The brother actually, I, I, I told him this. I said, man, you should have like 50,000 subscribers, man, or something like that, because his, uh, his content is really good. You know, you can get a lot of uh, ideas. Just I could watch George channel for a week and I could have enough content for six months because um, he brings out so many different and unique things. So let's try to support our brother. He was nice enough to come and speak to us. And this is what we need to do as black men. You know, we have one of our brothers. You know, I always try to bring our people who are talented and have something to the conversation. And, you know, I think as YouTubers in the community, we need to start showcasing our brothers to our on our platforms. I know a lot of people don't believe in doing that, but I do. And, and, and this is how, you know, things get better. You evolve, your content gets better everything you never know who's out there um especially for black men because this is another thing that we gotta all, all to see if we don't start promoting each other who will promote us as, as a group of brothers you know what i mean and so this is something that all of you 
need to know I, I really believe in this. Um, I'm, I am tired of you niggas. I'm letting you know. I told y'all yesterday. After 2019, I'm not fucking with y'all no more. So y'all niggas need to go ahead and link up now because when I'm done, I'm done. I'm tired of y'all. I'm letting niggas know. I'm trying to I make mean, me go back so I don't go in. But let me read this super chat. My brother, Carl McFarlane, this man is spitting high fire. Brother Marlon McFarlane, I would love to get you on our UK show, brother. So let me know if you're interested. I'll let you have on, come on the panel on the Saturday shows. But let, let's kind of get, get, get to this whole point. Um, let's talk about some positive things that you've been seeing. I mean, because obviously we do know that black men have issues. Um, and we are trying to start off small. Um, as positive, these kind of conversations that you've been seeing, um, you know, like on our channel, the panels that we've been having with the collaboration, do you see that this is a step forward in the progress? Are there any positive things you've been seeing in black male YouTube that, that makes you feel that brothers are going to slowly begin to try to work together one or two things? Yeah, I mean, just um, just the mere fact that we're actually talking for many different demographics, that, that that's a positive. You're actually able to bring brothers on where we can talk, where we're not calling each other bitch ass niggas and all. Like we're actually talk. We have disagreements. We fuss at each other every now and then. You know, I blame everything on ABL. If you watch, it's all your fault, ABL. But um, we, uh, we just the mere fact that we're, we're beginning to converse and 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 um, just put things on the table where we can actually hear each other. We can actually hear each other for the first time because we spend so much time uh, devoted to what we like. If you're a drug dealer and you're making money, you're devoted to selling drugs. You're in the hood, traveling, doing different shit. If you're in college, you're devoted to your studies. Uh, uh, so we got what, what I'm trying to say is you got black people everywhere doing different things. And we and we we don't we very rarely get to places where we can come together and talk and have conversations amongst each other. So when you start bringing people from different demographics from everywhere, but people like Xanatos Clutch, people like George, people like Man of Tomorrow, Information Man. Moses Jenkins, you bring in black people from different uh, parts of the country, different demographics, and we come in and we sit down and we talk, man. You, you know when you get men together, it's gonna it's gonna explode because we egotistical, we bullheaded. But then, but then the thing is, it's not it's not the fact that uh, uh, the fact that you disagree is how you disagree. A after every show, we always come back down and we laugh, we joke, and then we end the show. And then you know we we do so we have we're conversating, we're we're sharing information back and forth to each other. And that's, th that's the first start. And that's what I commend you for. Because I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you. I probably would have never talked to a person like Xanatos Clutch until coming onto your, your channel, but coming onto your channel, listening to him talk and him listening to me, we get a, we get a better perspective for certain things. You understand what I'm saying? Exactly. We get a better perspective. So I, I may disagree with a lot of things he say, but I don't hate him. I don't hate him, but I think that we do need to talk. We need to have these type of conversations as black men. Okay, so let me let me let me just do this real quick. Uh, most of the black men genuine everywhere is out of his mind. Let me also do this. Um, let me go to some of the other people. Tony Ed Ashley W. You ain't gonna holler back. You kidding me? A nail. Okay, Detroit three hundred. And my brother's keeper, enough said, George, Tony, Ed, Ashley, W, you sexy, holler at your boy. He donated. To All right, let me talk about this. Um, this guy's talking mm -hmm. about the Detroit thing and my brother's keeper. Okay, black men have tried to do certain things in black communities and black women have stopped them, especially in the Detroit 300 thing. That was a big thing. What do you feel about brothers like Anel who, who are mentioning stuff like this where you know, black men are trying to do things in the community? A lot of times that resistance comes from black women themselves. What's, what's your response to that? Well, the resistance is going to come from black women because of the generations, the, mu the multi-generations of not looking to you for, for protection, strength, and power. We've been, we've, we've been emasculated and knocked out of our kingly seats for generations, and white supremacists put the woman at the doorstep, not you, because you're the biggest threat. So the woman has been, big mama has been forced to hold down the fort for generations, and they don't know how to give up their power. So that conversation is more complex, O'Shea, because it goes into a whole lot of other stuff that that that's not just surface. That what they talking about. A lot of our black, a lot of our women are hurt. A lot of our women see a lot of black men with with vitriol because they don't understand warfare. I, I keep telling y'all, six out of ten black women before the age of eighteen is molested, and a lot of these are the mothers. A lot of these are the are ones that set the helmet that's running the household. And, and guess who they've been molested by, O'Shea? 
us. A lot of them are beaten and uh, abandoned. So what I'm saying is, and that's not making an excuse for them. I'm making, I'm telling you, see, this is the thing where I need black men to understand. When I say these things, I'm trying to make you aware of certain things so you can see it and understand what we are up against. So now, once you know this, you know what you have, the things that you have to do. So I don't, I don't, what I'm saying is, I don't not expect to get opposition from black women because I know I'm going to get it. Because black women, black women don't, most of our black women don't know how to get power because they never saw powerful black men. It's been a long time since they've seen powerful black men. I told you, the psychological effects of black women watching us march and ask white men for civil rights, watching us uh, 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 put on suits and talk right and, and having to behave right and be subordinate to fucking whites. What's the psychological effect that that did to our women? Nobody's under, no, I, I'm not understanding how my brothers is not getting this shit. This is called warfare. That's all orchestrated by the white dominant society. To turn your woman against you, the very woman that gives birth to the black boys, to turn those women against the fucking men that plant the seeds. That's called warfare. So if black men, if we if we got any self-respect, we should be fucking angry. The, 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 the Detroit 300 ain't the only way we can fix the black community. That's just one of them. Okay. That's not the only thing. But as black men, until we understand warfare, what I'm trying to tell you is, what I'm trying to tell black men, when black men get it right, the right women will show up. The right women will get it right. Those that don't, then fuck them. You leave them where they at. Because there's a lot of black women that's waiting for us to get right. When, when, we, when, when we talk the way we talk in these lives, there's a lot of black women that's here watching us. And we say some inflammatory shit. Why do you think they're here? Because they, attra they are attracted to uh, alpha males, black men, black men that speak with their chests out confident. That's why those black women are here watching us and subscribe to us. Because you got a lot of other black women that say, man, fuck them niggas. I ain't watching that shit. And they'll go make videos and talk about us. But the black women that's here are the ones that's waiting for us to get right. Why do you think they they, they they in the chat room for hours watching us, uh, giving money, subscribing to us, everything? Why do you think they here? Because those are the black women that's waiting for us to get right. Those are the ones that we should be venerating. Why y'all talking about the wrong women? What you worrying about them for? Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to tell. It's, it's, it's plenty of black women that come into these live streams. Am I wrong, O'Shea? No, you're right. You're right about that. That's what I'm saying. When we get right, the right woman will show up. Mm -hmm. I go to sleep. I, I lay in the bed with the right woman every night. She was with me. She was with me when I had it and when I had nothing. She get on my nerves. Yeah, she do. She a black woman. But you know why she get on my nerves a lot of times? So she demand excellence from me. And she and she demands she she demands me to be a man. And, I don't have, and guess what? That shit made me better. That shit made me better. How can I be with any other woman that don't understand the plight of a black man? Hell no. Growing up in the hells of North America, I got I'm with a black woman that understands my plight and pushed me to be great. Everybody's story ain't that, but that's my story. Let me let me talk about this real quick because a lot of brothers, you know, and, and you know my my market of uh, YouTube. Shout out to Tony Ed. I like the dark skin boot, but to be demanded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me do this real quick. Like, guys, while you're here, uh, some of the people came over. I see some people from Doctor Movie's channel. I want to thank Doctor Mumbi also for featuring me on her channel. The interview I did when I was in Kenya. She's a very very nice person. We're talking to her on WhatsApp. She's off the hook. Thank you, Dr. Mumu, for uh, featuring me on your channel. I know a lot of people coming over from, from that channel. But this is what I want to do. I want um, I want to talk about this because a lot of times, and Sister Erica, you've seen her on my panel, Erica Williams. Um, yeah. She yeah. talks about black men chasing um, this whole concept of big booty Betty. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Grandeur said, George needs to bait information man yelling. Nobody can beat information man yelling. <laughs> George, you start, you kick that off too. I blame you. Uh, when he used to went off that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Black Adam. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that. But, but uh, let me, let me, let me make, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make you a moderator. You can't get timed out, George. But um, so let me, let me, let me do this. Um, a lot of brothers. Erica has this hypothesis that black men are not always looking for the black men who um. Black men are not looking for the black women who want to deal with them. Black men are too busy looking for the big booty Bettys. Um, now, to, to your uh, point, 
I have noticed that there's a lot more women. I mean, for those of you who've been on my moderator for me for a, for a while, you know, like wake the hell up. Um, uh, Mr. Grandeur, you know, uh, young Jay's been here for a while. Uh, you know, some of the older guys, you guys know that we used to never really have women over here. Um, but as the manosphere started to grow, a lot of women do, um, come over here now that were not here previously, even though the content is not even geared towards them at all, has nothing to do with them. Many nights, nothing catered to them. They're here all the time. A lot of them given like Barry CEO. Yeah, never. They're always here now. So, um, are black men, in your opinion, focusing on the wrong women? Or yeah. are they okay? Let's talk about that. Black. Let me tell you. Let me. I just, and this is what I. This is what I always say. When I was a kid growing up. Uh. Uh. uh what, wait a minute, Georgia. Yeah. What? What? Most. When I was a kid growing up, I never seen my fathers or my grandfathers. That's why I did the video um, this weekend when I was in down in Virginia, uh, uh, showing my family in the land that we had, we've had since the 1700s down in uh, uh, Gretna, uh, built on a plantation. I grew up around strong fucking men, authoritative men that never seen them complain about women or certain shit. Uh, I was always taught that maybe I holler or maybe I'm so, so straightforward because I was raised by men, O'Shea. And my father always tell him, told me like, your words and actions are always speak louder than your lips. Like, don't nobody, nobody's gonna ever give a fuck about what a black man has to say. Either you're making it happen or you're not. And I was raised by by a father like that, hardcore. And and so I'm telling black men that when you when you complain and whine and bitch and moan about certain things, it's not gonna happen for you. You got to get up and create the realities that you want and work together with the males and the right women to show up. And some of them <laughs> fucked up, O'Shea, some of them will get right. Some of them will get right. Uh, you'd be surprised. Some of the some of the biggest mouth black women are only that way because, because they're looking to be led. They're looking to be loved. They're looking to be taken care of. But it's not enough alpha strong men out here enough to tell them to be the fuck quiet. Come with me. I got you. Where they at? These niggas, not these dudes and simps. I'm just being honest. They want to find a white woman that's going that's going to listen to everything that they say and be subordinate to them until until y'all get in an argument and she called the cops on you. <laughs> or y'all get into a fight or something like that. They don't want to fight and struggle with their own with their own. They don't want to do it. So what I'm trying to tell black men is when you get right, the right woman to show up in your life. The right woman. The women. You have women that come into the chat room all the time. Mm-hmm. Watch us, comment, everything, because women are attracted to authoritative males. That's their nature. And people hear me say, well, want to be led. You sound sexist. So what? Okay, I'm being sexist then. Women want to be led. Women want to be led, but they want to be led by the right by the right men where they know that they're going to be protected and supported. And when black men get on right footing to the point where he can sustain himself and take care of his own. If you notice when you when you got your shit going on, women, women, women read the credits. They know who the producers are. Women be women be in the fucking down in the lobby waiting for you and shit. When you got the shit right, whether whether they group in or not, women know who you are. So when women stand right, when women get right, when men get right, the women <laughs> stop. I keep I'm telling black men, stop worrying about the women. The right women will show up. We should, you know, what we should do O'Shea. We should be in a room with a group of with a hundred black men creating the shit that we want, right? But no women there, right? Creating the real, creating the shit that we want. And I guarantee you, we did that shit for six months when you came out. Man, you'd be surprised the women that'll be around. The women that <laughs> show up. The women that show up. Because all, all women is waiting to see is black men standing together in unison, working together. That shit turned women on more than any motherfucking thing. Ask the women would get them wet. Powerful men. It is what it is. But I, I, it, it's hard trying to get these fucking dudes that's been raised by fucking women all the time that don't know what author, authoritative male leadership is. They, I don't want to hear that shit. Stop bitching, whining, and crying. Shut the fuck up, nigga, and get the fuck over here. And let's build together. Don't come in here. And say, don't come in here. And say nothing about a goddamn woman, nigga. What you? What, what skill set are you bringing to the table that we can build? We're not even talking about women right now. Let's create an economic surplus where we can take care of ourselves and our children and watch the white women show up. Until I can get black men to do that, then listen, we, we, we fucked up. And people think that, oh, he's sipping. No, I'm not. I'm, talk, I'm talking to you niggas. <laughs> I'm talking to y'all. 
That's who I'm. That's who I'm talking to. I need. I need. I need alpha males, man, to step up to the plate. Y'all keep telling these women this, nigga. You keep trying to get pussy. Stop putting pussy before. Stop putting pussy before your economics. Purse first, ass last, nigga. Fuck wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I will, I will, I will, I will agree on this, George. Uh, and I'm going to shout out some of the brothers that's been super chatting. You know, I've noticed that. I mean, especially at least with me on on the content, I try to talk about women the least. I, I address it here and there, but I, I am in the in the um, in agreement with you. I, I feel many black men who have been on this channel from let's say last year to this year. But well, last year it was a big thing about women and kind of stuff like that, and now we're bringing in uh, you know like the brother Young Jay, he he uh, uh, Dean Cole, he you know people like Glennon Cameron, people like Dr. Kenya Meadows, people who, uh, like I have Dr. Tsan, Professor Tsan Johnson on Friday of Cal State Fresno PhD. Um, we are bringing in the brothers who are just like it's not even about the women. Like we're gonna do the Negro Con convention um, in in, in, the, in next year, where just all black men are gonna be there. Um, I've noticed that when it's more about the men that that that, that and, the, and the men are not even really worried about the women, the women do decide to show up. That's something that I I, I, I did notice. So you have a great point. I think that that's really true, um, especially and my brother uh, Moses will tell you this at the Morehouse graduation. Um, who do you see every June when the dudes of Morehouse graduate? It's women a be right there. It's a known fact in Black America. Everybody knows this. When Morehouse brothers graduate, it's nothing but all these beautiful young women trying to catch one of them graduates. Damn right. <laughs> that's that's my point. And all what, of them. What, what, look at this, O'Shea. Somebody said, George, have you ever been cheated on? Another one said, I agree with George, but he being one-sided. I'm going to say this. Roscoe, you got damn right I'm being one-sided. I'm talking to you niggas. I keep trying to tell y'all, I don't talk to black women. I let black women talk to black women. The conscious black women that think like me, I let them talk to black women. I'm talking to black men, uh, 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 Roscoe. I'm talking to you niggas. Come together. Uh, uh, some of the sisters listen with me, they agree with me. I'm not, listen, I'm not, I got daughters. I'm not talking to, I talk to my daughters. I'm not talking to the sisters. I'm talking to black men. I'm trying to shape you niggas up. They say, George, have you ever been cheated on? But see, this is the shit I'm talking about. What the fuck do that got to do with what we talking about now? Yeah, I've been cheated on. Guess what? I had my heart broke by a black woman. Broke my goddamn heart. Heart fell out my fell out my chest. I had to be <laughs> yes, I did. But guess what? Guess what? I got over it over time, and I moved on because it's just an emotion and feeling, and I moved on to create a better reality for me. I'm glad she broke my heart. I, if I seen her right now, I would tell her. I would tell her thank you. For, for giving me that experience at a young age. So that way I could understand what, what love and lust is. The two L's. I can, I, I can make a distinction. And now as I'm going forward, I have experiences where I can pick a right woman. And I, and, and I can now, instead of thinking with my, 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 my lower head, I can think with my higher head. Right. From the experience. Thank you for hurting me. Thank you. See, see, that's the difference between me and a lot of a lot of you dudes. Y'all too emotionally invested into shit where you can't even get your head out your ass to create something. And that's all I'm trying to tell black men. Listen, yeah, I'm one sided because I'm talking to the men. I ain't talking about women. I, I, I'm not exiling women from anything. I, I, I know exactly what we got going on. My enemy ain't my brother. My enemy is trying to wake my brothers up and get us into a place. Get us into a place where we are building, man. Y'all keep worrying about pussy. Oh, she hurt me. Oh, my God. She did this. Oh, the black woman is this. Oh, she got me in child support. Listen, man. That shit going to continue to happen. Okay, so you complaining. So you went and got drunk. And when you came down off your drunk, guess what? She still had your black ass in child support. He still, All these things still exist. And to, but guess what you didn't do? You ain't working together in unison with black men to create something different. All you doing is complaining. I'm past that shit. I'm not complaining. I, I, I got everything that y'all saying in the chat. I get it. But I don't want to have those conversations when I got black men together. I want to talk about how we can make some money. How we can build. Purse first. Ass last, motherfuckers. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Okay. 
So let, let me just do this real quick, George. Man, you know, you always can count on George, man, to set the motherfucker off. I mean, you know, George, Information Man, ABL, the Great Black Shark, um, you know, Edward, and Man of Tomorrow. Those are my, those are my dudes, man. If I need, uh, in Black Ice TV, the two, but if I need somebody to set off a topic, I know who to call. I know who to set that motherfucker off. I'm glad I got friends. Uh, man, in, in, in high place. Let me just uh, 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 subscribe. Some of the people on the super chat here. JSPK Fitness, my brother, man. I got to get him back. He did a great job on why are black men so overweight. Uh, he did a, a, a really, really good job, man. Brother lost over 150 pounds. Um, I want everybody to subscribe to this channel. He did a great job about two weeks ago. The video has over 7,000 views, man. The brother is just an excellent YouTuber. He's coming up. I'm definitely going to we're going to build his fitness panel. George, I know you can talk about that too. Um, many black men are born with a disadvantage because they were born a single mom. We have to change the culture first to change the community. I definitely agree. That's, that's true. I agree with that. That's true. But that's that's why you have some of the guys that simp in, 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 in inside the um the thing because we've lost our ability. You know what fathers teach you, O'Shea? Did you grow, did you grow up with your father, O'Shea? Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, fathers teach uh, you? most of my life. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm gonna tell you why you speak the way you speak because fathers teach you how to use logic. And intellect to create the reality you want. When when my when my wife is bitching and moaning about something, the first thing I do is try is try to use my mind to try to fix and remedy her problem. I don't I don't go tit for tat, argue word for word with my wife for what? I'm not gonna win that battle. Right. So what I do is, you know, I let her go through. She, oh, all right, all right, okay, okay. And then I use my mind and my intellect to remedy and fix the problem. As, as because we don't have fathers, we we lost our ability to remedy and fix the problems within our own selves. All we do is bitch and moan, and we we so sensitive, and then we become emotional and sensitive at the same time. So we bitch, 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 cry, 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 cry. But there's no there's no logic. There's nothing in the chat room where the brothers are saying, "Okay, George, I get it." You know what? I'm in Detroit, and we got this. I'm in Baltimore, and the black men, we got this, and we building this. It's just, oh, George, you bitch, you being disingenuous, you being one sided, nigga, because you niggas ain't listening. I ain't talking to the women. I'm talking to you niggas. Stop crying and let's put our let's put our resources together, the limited resources that we have, and let's make a lot. Because if I had 50 kilos on the table, I can get half of you niggas to get down with me. The Detroit community, because all you'd be worrying about is getting cars, bitches, and money. But if I told y'all, let's work together and stop blaming the women and let's work together and create the reality we want, oh George, you being one-sided. George, you doing this. You niggas is fucked up. Y'all not listening. I'm not hearing you. Yeah, that's that's very true. And a lot of times also, you know, because one thing I noticed, George, is even even with money, I mean, you know, like the problem I have with this black men, I know they have money, but sometimes even even if it's just your participation, even if it's just your giving an idea, like one guy asked, how can you contribute to the mental sphere? I mean, I'll tell you, there are many ways you can contribute. You can contribute if you want to prevent topics, if you want to, uh, if you have a skill. You know, we have guys who are truck drivers, guys who might be plumbers or electricians. If you know how to get into certain industries, I'll bring you on the show. You know, it's, you can write an article. You know, there's a lot of ways you can contribute. Money is one of them. But again, like George is saying, the thing is, because if we have your attention, the money comes. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so if especially nowadays, if you can get people's attention to something, the money comes. A lot of times it's just telling people about a brother like George making. When you go to you know your job or something like that. And you have a brother that might be one. It's just sometimes it's bringing brothers into the community. That's how you can help. You know, it's, it's just letting people know that there are stuff out there for black men. I'm not going to just tell you, give me, you know, Patreon, all that. Okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, you can give your money. You can super chat. That's good. But, you know, sometimes really movements get started when you are in it. You know what I mean? It's easy to throw 5 or 10 or $15 or something like that at it. You know what I mean? But bring your heart with it. And your, you know, the money and investors that can come. You know what I mean? That's that's easy. But but the thing about it is, are you in it? Because if you're in it, then the money will will, will be a will be no issue. But we were trying to get black men's attention, so that's how you can contribute. Let me ask George about that. You know, for brothers who want to contribute to seeing black men get better, in what ways do you think they can give it? They can contribute. Just we have to be active. We have to be active in um, caring about. Uh, Black male empowerment and black male development. Uh, everybody, everybody brings something to the table. 
Some people got skill sets. Some people got money. Some people just got their time. Some people with the skill sets and money, we begin to develop some of the people. But we have to develop. We have to develop it, and we have to make sure. In my opinion, we have to make sure it stays black. If I'm sitting here with O'Shea, and we got it, and it starts with an idea at a table, and it turns into a large conglomerate, I want to make sure it stays black because we built it black. I don't want it to turn into coal and years from now, thirty years from now. I when, I when when I'm old, walking with a cane with gray hair, I want to see people as black as O'Shea running that shit, not a bunch of motherfucking uh, 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 Ben Simmons and shit. <laughs> no, because because that wasn't our, that wasn't our incentive when we started it. We started it to empower black men to get ourselves out of the situation that black men are being forced to live in. So I'm not sharing it with no fucking with Becky, m- making no babies with her. And then uh, 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 that mixed baby marry another white woman because his mother is white. So most likely he's going to go get a white woman because that's who nurtured him. And the next thing you know, everything that me and O'Shea built that was supposed to be for black empowerment is now white empowerment. No. No. I'm building with black men with a black mentality with that wants to forge black culture and keep it black where we can pass it down generationally. So I want to I want to start now. This is the mentality of George Macon. This is what I see. So I want, I'm trying to tell you, I want motherfuckers as black as O'Shea. <laughs> Great grandchildren saying, thank you, Grandpa <clears throat> Pop O'Shea, for having an idea 40 years, 50 years ago. And because of what you guys created, we have this now. And it's black. It's not fucking Chinese grow, black and Asian. It's not, <laughs> Chinese it's not, Yeah, it's not, a, it's not Chinese grow. It's not fucking uh, 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 mixed race shit. Get the fuck out of here. Other than that, then it's not empowerment. We're not empowering ourselves. We actually weakening ourselves. So we got to get strong, build as black men. And when the right black women show up, we got to plant seeds in those right black women to produce more black boys to keep empowering black boys. That's what the white man did. And that's why he stayed in power for so long. Yeah, he fucked black women, but he didn't put them in power. He used that white woman to maintain white supremacy. He used her womb to, to birth more white boys to pass it and white girls to pass it down generationally. We got to we got to understand the only way we're going to maintain what we have is to get is to get with the right black woman. When, when we get right, when we get right, the right black woman to show up and you got to procreate with those. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, uh, Ralph, don't be disrespectful. Come on, man. What did he, what did he say? What did he say? He said, it, George, is your wife holding up cue cards? Like, but but don't. But this is the thing, though. Don't even block him. I'm going to say this to him. We can have conversations, brother. But this is the problem that we have, George, uh, 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 O'Shea. Yeah. I'm not even mad at him for making that comment. You know why? Because I expect it from our people. This is the way, this is what we do as black men. This is what we do to each other. This is normal. I expect this from my people because that's why at the end of all my videos, I say I love my people more than they hate themselves because I understand what, what I'm up against when I'm trying to talk to the people. So yeah, it's my wife holding up cue cards. I mean, you know, that made you feel good. You feel empowered that you said that, fine. That's okay, whatever. We can disagree, but the, I, I, the, we don't have to talk to each other that way, bro. I, I wouldn't even time them out. I wouldn't even, like, it's, it's cool. It's cool. I'll take that from you. I'll take that. He uh, said, he said yeah. I'm only shaming black men, but this is the thing. I'm not shaming black men. This is not shaming black men. I don't understand. <laughs> See, this is the problem, Moshe. Mm-hmm. I would, how did I... Anything that I said on here is a shame in black men. When I'm, I'm bringing, I'm bringing awareness to what black men should be doing. Yeah, I, I don't think you're shame. Yeah, think. I'm not shaming black men. I'm telling you, listen, motherfucker. See, if I'm shaming black men, you already being shamed by the white man. He does, he does, he does shame. He done gave you his name, his fucking language. He made you, he make you wear suits to work in his corporation. He put fucking uh, pharmaceutical drugs in your community and and and, uh, 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 and, and, and lock you up and put you in prisons for, sell- for selling the same shit. Look up the Surik family. They do all kinds of shit. They've been shaming you, but you get mad at me because I'm, I'm trying to wake motherfuckers up and say I'm shaming black men. No, brother, shame on you for not understanding what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not shaming black men. I'm a black man. I love black men. When I say, when I tell black men, when I tell black men that we gonna build something, we gonna build something, I say, oh, Shay, we built o- O'Shea. I need your wife to be black. I need you to produce black, dark skinned babies. So 20 years from now, little O'Shea Duke Jackson will be at the head of the company that we built, not Ben Simmons. <laughs> you know, fuck, fuck Ben Simmons. I don't need that. I need it black. 
I needed black culture. I needed I need black identity. The same way all the other groups have theirs. I'm trying to tell you, man, half of my family is Latino. They they proud of their, their Latino identity. Oh, say, you know, I had family members tell me, why do you identify as black? Look how hard it is for y'all over here. We went, we starting to win. Why don't you come over here? Fuck no, I don't identify as no fucking Latino. Now I'm a fucking black man. But but I have family members, I have family and friends that tell me that. No, I'm a fucking black man. I'm a North American Negro. I'm what my fucking father is. That's what I am. And this is what I'm trying to tell black men. We have to have a sense of pride, a sense of national, <clears throat> sense of identity. So put the women to the side, Bill, and when the right women show up, get you a right woman, black woman, put, put your babies in them and create and maintain it. So 100 years from now, people can see what we created and what we maintained. Because if you if, if you hate the black women so much, you build the fucking, a fucking a, 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 a great economy and you give it back to fucking Becky. What was it all for? What was it all for? You, you, you checkmate it. You checkmate yourself. It's not colorism. It's nationalism. Like everybody else understands this shit, O'Shea. That's why the Indian man, when, 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 when that Indian girl bring you home, my father look at you like, what the fuck is this? Who is that? He's not Indian. He doesn't share our culture and values. I'm not passing my generational wealth that I acquired down to his children. We the only ones that want to seek the humanity in everybody and love everybody and want to and jump in everybody else's woman's pussy but our own. No, man, we got to stop. So I'm not talking to the black sisters. I'm talking to black men. Because when we get in power, we move the crowd. We create the culture. We create the economic policies and the political policies as black men. And then we, 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 we seek out a good woman, plant the seed in the soil, and we create the uh, communities that we want. And so we begin to think like that then we always want to lose. No, I, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Let me, um, and again, I think, I think the arguments to some of the guys as well, he's not talking about what, what black women are doing because black women are swirling and stuff like that. Let me, let me say this. Um, I understand that argument. I understand what you guys are talking about. But again, I, I'm gonna say this. I really don't give a fuck about what they're doing. I'm just me personally. I, I just don't. Um, I like operating in men only spaces. Um, I, I mean, I, I love I love the manosphere. I love my part of YouTube. I love what I do. I love dealing with the brothers. And you know, the, the thing about it is this. It's about what we are, what we are trying to do. You know what I mean? I think a lot of brothers take take offense. I'm not going to call you emotional because I'm not going to call you emotional because you could be receiving because it's, it's, it's ever how the person is saying it's how you receive it. So you can be receiving it in that way. But what I will tell you is this. There are a lot of YouTube channels right now on black male and black male YouTube that are always talking about what black women are doing. Their fuckery, whatever. That's not moving black men ahead as a group. We have to be mindful of that. Is that helping us get any our own conventions going? Is that helping us do any kind of um, networking? Is that helping us do anything? It's not helping us do anything at all. You know what I mean? It's not helping us do anything at all. So that's what we have to really understand is it's really a waste of time to just address them or whatever they're talking about because you can't really address them because they, number one, if you address them, they're not going to receive it well. You know what I mean? If you try to talk to black women as a black man, number one, there's so many laws out there. Oh, you know, you're harassing us. Oh, you're, you, you can't talk to them. So you black men got to understand you cannot talk to them or address them. We can kind of talk about them within our own groups, but it's not going to work. It's not going to help Thank you. We got to understand that. Thank it's not you. That's help. why I talk to black men. Thank yeah. you. And then, yeah, and we already heard about it yesterday from the brother. He had to, you know, um, so that's the thing. You know, black women are a protected group. You are not. You know what I'm saying? That's just really what it is. So only thing that we can do is let us have the open dialogue with other brothers who don't think like us. And, and let us, because if we don't allow each other to, to discuss our own differences, then we can't grow. We all need to evolve. And so that's the thing, you know, a lot of you black men really got to focus on what we can do 
and change your life because I don't have no black female problems. I'm just letting you know. And I'm an ugly motherfucker. So if I don't have them problems, <laughs> you, look, you look as bad as me or worse. I'm a living witness that if you doing what you're supposed to do, women gonna be the last thing you gotta worry about. And I'm an ugly nigga. That's telling you that y'all niggas know I'm ugly. Well, I might look better than you, but <laughs> well, we already know that you. Know, we already know how y'all look, so <laughs> I'm just letting you know. But brothers, you know, we really want to focus on and because I'm telling you, it's money in talking shit about black women. It's money in 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 in, in, in beating them over the head. But then that's not helping you, and that's bullshit. So I don't want to sit here and take you niggas' money for talking about shit about them when that's just entertaining. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we need to be establishing networks with other brothers, whether it's in the nation or out the nation. That's what we need to be doing. That's the main thing we should be doing and focused on that. I'm Let, me say, ahead, Let me say this before I get out of here. Okay. I, 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 I'm going to bring this thing home real quick. Listen. Listen, black, black men out there. I don't care if you a conservative brother. I don't care if you are a pro-black brother, pan-Africanist, Nation of Islam, Sunni Islam, uh, uh, um, Hebrew, Black Church, um, Seven Day of Venice, all this shit. Black men. Let me explain something to y'all. We are so divided. But, oh, shit, do you know that within our division, we get up and go to work for this white power structure every day and we don't complain? But uh, 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 we, we, we go, we go, we go to work for them. Um, we conform to their systems. But when it comes to us working together, oh, man, fuck that. I ain't fucking with that nation of Islam Muslim. Or I'm not going in there to buy some chicken, but you'll go to Crown Fried Chicken to the Arab to buy chicken. We've been conditioned to hate each other and not work together. But we work. But we all. But guess what? We'll all be in the same building. A, a person working, a person that's an Israelite, a brother that's a black conservative. We'll all be in that same building working, working for white working for a corporation that's complete that was complicit in destroying our people. We'll work together and, and be subordinate to their rules and regulations. But when it comes down time for us to work together despite our differences and, and be subordinate to each other, we can't do it. That right there is a red flag and that's where we define what a coon is. We are all coons and to some capacity. Because you can go you can go into these you can go into these corporate structures of these jobs and you got black men from all different walks of life. Working work guess what they doing O'Shea working together. Respecting each other following the rules, everything. But but then when it comes to us to go in the room together and work together, oh man, fuck that nigga, I ain't working with him. That right there is letting you know that psychologically something's wrong with you. And the white no. power in the society has conditioned you to be subordinate to them, but not to each other. Because despite your differences, you can work together working for him, but you can't work together working for your goddamn self. You are a coon. <laughs> All coons. And, and, and to those <laughs> And this is what these are the things, these are the things that we got to understand. So that's why, even though I can disagree with ABL, I'm not gonna go out of my way to disrespect ABL or Manitou's clutch. You know why? You know why, O'Shea? I disagree with those brothers, but I understand warfare. And I know that those brothers got a skill set that the black community still need. I know that I know that uh they need people like me that came from the rough and rugged uh, uh aspects of the community that made it out and Cleaned this stuff up and got itself together and can speak and, and can speak well, can hold his own. That 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 got somewhat his finances together and different things. We need each other to build the community back. So we can't make the excuse that we can't work together, but but we work together in this in this corporate structure every fucking day yeah. to, to uplift the system. So black men stop making stop making excuses. I'm not trying to build. A so-called matriarchal society. I'm trying to get black men together to create the reality that we want and the right women to show up. And we, we don't have to have a matriarchal or a patriarchal society. We can have a decide the decided whatever the type of society we that we define that we want it to be. I have to think like that. See the brothers in the chat room saying, Oh, he want to build a matriarchal society. No, you niggas is thinking the way that you've been conditioned to think. The fuck is you talking about matriarchal or patriarchal? You ever think about creating something that you want for yourself? How about I make up some shit that I want? I'm, oh, no, you see, y'all can't. Independent thought of a black man is illegal. Because for black men to think independent and create things for itself is illegal. And I'm trying to wake you brothers up to create the realities that we want when we come together. That's all I want for us to do. Stop complaining. Stop bitching. 
Yeah. Right. So we got we got to stop. We come out of church, and you walk, walk, walk right past the black the black business and go right to the Arab to get a fucking get some fried chicken. How the fuck <laughs> black people fried chicken? Who the fuck make chicken better than Big Mama? <laughs> I make chicken like grandma. Like, are you serious? But this is the this is the mental conditioning that we go through, and this is this is the issue that we have. It. So now, me and you, we could be setting up a big deal. We all putting a hundred thousand um, dollars. We all putting a hundred thousand dollars up, and, and and you got the black church, you got the black conservatives, and the pro black and pan Africans walk in and put a hundred thousand. Oh, I can't work with them. You like, but but then you'll go work with the white man, and he'll invest in it, and then within five years he'll fucking take your company from you. And you'll end up owning only 35% of it. He owns 65% of it. And now you, you don't even have a seat. You have a seat at the table with no say so. This is the shit for us in business because we don't see the importance in each other. So we sell everything over to them. And they end up controlling the narratives of, of everything about us. Because black men, I'll say before I go, black men, you are not in control of your own destiny. You are subordinate, not to your woman, not to the black woman. Not to the white woman, you are subordinate to the white man that controls the dominant society. That's who you're subordinate to. So your your enemy, your true enemy, is this this the dominant elites that's conditioned you, you mentally to keep yourself down. It conditions you mentally to keep yourself down. Start seeing yourself as great. Start seeing your brother and wanting for your brother as you want for yourself. Start having love for your brother, despite his differences. That's why I told you don't, don't don't time the brother out. It's cool. He said what he he said what he he mentioned what he said, but it, it's, it's all right. I'm not mad at him because I expect that from my brothers. I just ask him that when you mention to me, don't mention my wife. That's all. But other than that, we good. But on that on that, you know, I rest. I got to get to this hospital to see my pop. I think that this is good, and we need to have these type of uh, conversations. But I just want black men to know I'm not simple for black women, and and like I say I'm making a lot of contradictions. That's because you don't get it. But see, this is. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not going to get it though, O'Shea. And I don't expect mm-hmm. you know some of these brothers is when we begin to build, they're going to be the ones working in our factories. <laughs> and, and I'm, I'm being honest because every 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 black person ain't built to be leaders. Right. Some of them right. are going to be driving trucks. So if he think that I, if he think I'm contradicting, he don't understand. And guess what? He's not a brother that's going to be at the table because he doesn't get it. So he's going to be a brother we build up, but he's going to he's just going to be working. That's all. So I'm no, I'm not. I I I. I, I as a, most of the people in the chat room understand everything that I'm saying. I'm not being contradictory. Yeah. I just want black men to start thinking for themselves, independent, outside outside of this structure. Right. No, that's 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 cool. Let me let me do this real quick before you leave. My brother, Super Triz, respect Dr. O'Shea Duke and George Mickey. I said my big bro full circle. I gotta get my big bro on, man. Let him lead off one of these segments because he can he he's he should be a YouTuber. He can talk, man. Uh he, he be he be on your channel. Hey, he he come to your show. I'll talk to you, George. He the only one I know that can do that. Who that? Who that? Full circle. Oh, that's my man. Yeah. yeah he come to you, have you quiet on your shit. You know, that's how our people do though over my channel. We don't give a fuck. So we show up to your shit too. So hip hip uh just thank you so much. The De- demurge new sub, real like this kind of thank you so much. O'Shea is young but gay. Come on, bro. How do I know? They give you two dollars on. Um, the world shames black men, and we don't do anything about it but complain. You hurt our feelings. Oh, I'm gonna make a video on that. Uh, you hurt our feelings. Uh, hold on, let me write. I'm gonna do a classic on that. Wait till I get my mic. Y'all thought, man, you just wait. Y'all thought yesterday was bad. Wait till I release this shit. <laughs> you make sure you got your barbecue sauce. Nigga, look, y'all know I'm gonna go in on my classic rant. I can only give y'all about one a week because I got so many interviews. My brother, the boys out of Britain. Love and respect, Brother O'Shea, George making my tag, your wonderful brothers and sisters. Our brothers from Britain have really been holding us down, man. Shout out to Brother Marlon Mackey. They always Brother J.L. King. Bless up, bros. Thank you, Brother King. Kevin Green. Any brothers in Orange County, California, get at me. I code video games, and I don't give a fuck about relationships. Uh, okay. Tony A. Canadian Island Boy. Sorry. Uh, AA women are the worst. Okay. Um, let me see. Big Game James. Oh, Kevin Green. I completely forgot my life together, not focus on relationships. Thank you again, brother Kevin Green. Big Game or Renthal James, one of my favorite basketball players. George, you're my <laughs> dude. But black women get out of pocket with powerful black men as well. There's no evidence that that tell get in line. We in white supremacy racism. Then, then guess what? You shouldn't be where. 
They ain't the ones you should be with. If you a powerful black man, nigga, you you got all you hold the cards. Nigga, you know I mean women, you know I mean black women out here want to be with a powerful man. Why are you with her? If, if you with a powerful man and you got an unruly black woman, nigga, you the problem. You the problem. Yeah. Now, you got women in line. You got women in line. And, and let me just say this real quick too, O'Shea. Let me tell y'all. Let me tell. Let me tell brother something, man. I want y'all to understand this. We got to get out of this mindset that that you got to be with a black woman that equals what you have. No. Listen, listen, some of these women, when you got that paper, you got your shit right. Some of these women that equals what you have ain't going to be right for you because she's not going to be subordinate to you. She's not going to listen and you're not going to be subordinate to her. Sometimes it's nothing wrong with having a stay at home wife that 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 that, 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 take, that takes care of the house and the family while, while you hold the family down. Hello. Some, sometimes some of you educated, economically intelligent brothers, those are the women that you're supposed to have because those are the ones that's going to make you the most happy. I want y'all to understand. Listen to what George is telling y'all. Take the bullhead in this out. Unclog your ears, black man. I know, listen, I'm going to come to the screen. I know I'm a black man. I know y'all don't like listening to other black men. Listen to what George is telling you. Some of you economically intelligent brothers that have resources and economics, some of the best women that you can have is the stay-home wife. That's going to help you better, better yourself. Some of the women, some of the women, some of the women that, Got all these got got the same economics that you have. She's not conditioned to listen to you because she's driven on getting the same things that you get that you're getting, and y'all gonna always uh, uh uh have problems. So stop thinking that you gotta have the woman. So stop thinking that you gotta have the woman that got everything that you have, and then you look down on her being a bum. No man, no, no. We got the game fucked up. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. So I, 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 I hope y'all listening, man. If I, I, listen, I got my economics right. I don't need a woman that got everything that I have. Now, sometimes, sometimes you can, sometimes, O'Shea, you, you, but brother, you get lucky. You can have a woman that got more than you and she treats you great. And she share everything with you. Right. And she love you. That happens too. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes, but that's rare. And, and across the board of all women, though, not just black women, all women. So what I'm saying is, Stop looking down on on your sister on a sister because you got money and she don't, nigga. You planting your seed and creating the family. You at the head. You the fucking leader. You want to be the leader. You want women to listen to you. Then get the right woman, brother. Get the right woman. We 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 don't we're not doing what we supposed to do. So a lot of our women a lot of our women should be home. Stay home. Stay home while while we holding the fort down. Some are not all. I'm a, I'm a believer that some women if they want to work they can work. You know what I mean? I, my wife works. She make money. But guess who run this motherfucker here? I do. I do. She has to say so. She brings things to the table. Absolutely. I look at me and my wife as, as equals, but I run this house. I run. I, I protect the home. But but my wife, she runs the inner workings of the home. Dad, can I get some cookies that you ask your mother? We work together as a team, but she but I'm the I'm the motherfucking man in here. So these are the things, these are the things that these are the things that we gotta understand. You ain't gotta have a fucking woman. See, listen to this shit. Ain't no bitch sitting around my house drinking wine and eating crackers all day. See, but this <laughs> this, this is what happened to our, our men. We complain about the women, but then when we empower and we got we got a we got a woman that's taking care of the home and the children, we complain then too. You niggas need to figure out what it is that you fucking want. Because then you got a woman that's competing against you every day and not listening to you, you, you gonna fucking complain. But then when you got the money and you got your fucking woman at home holding the kids down, keeping the uh, house clean, making sure, uh, 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 make, making sure you got everything that you're supposed to have, then, then you complain too. Oh, she's a trifling bitch just sitting there. Like, y'all, y'all fucked up. That's why I said, O'Shea, we gotta clean these niggas' minds up first. You niggas need to figure out what it is that you fucking want first. You niggas don't know what you want. You don't even know the type of woman that you want. There's no team in the course eyes. Stop thinking about the course. Think independent, black man. Create something that you want. That's all I'm saying. Create the things that you want. I understand what you're saying. The course this and the course that I got all that. I got all that. But when we begin to create the shit that we want, we can create the realities that we want. No, and that's all I'm saying, man. That's all I'm saying. You know, you can have, you can have, um, because sometimes you might have a woman. I mean, when I came home, I was fucked up. My finances, my woman took care of me. She could have easily said, nigga, listen, I ain't got time for this shit, motherfucker. Like, I was great. My fathers and uncles and them told me to have a man I had. No, she held me down. 
Right. Not back right. So it's, it's good black women out here. There's a lot of them. I, I have one. And, and I hold the house down. But all I'm saying is black men, if you if you, you want to be you want to be in that position, you want to be in that position, create the realities that you want. Some some of our women can work, don't get me wrong. Oh, say you might have a woman where you adopt and you might want your woman to work and y'all got a balanced life and y'all make it work. Cool. But that don't work for every alpha male. Every every alpha male don't need a woman that's going to be challenging him all the time. It doesn't work. So so for that man, he needs to stay at home wife. Hold the family down. That's what he needs. And I'm just trying to tell you, brothers, man, I just hope that y'all get it. No, that, that actually is true. Actually, I'm going to use that because I had a, a topic about uh, dating poor women or dating housewives, something like that. We'll work that in. But listen, George, I know that you have to um, to, to, to go. Uh, and, man, you did a hell of a job as usual. Um, this is actually our first official one-on-one because me and George have been doing like you know like Wendell with the first time I want to give him one on one. He came on with uh with uh, Black Eyes TV, so I want to thank him for coming on and spending his time and energy, man. You do definitely developing a fan base over here. Don't take all my subscribers from me, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm just, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm a hater. But anything, thank you so much, brother. You did a really good job today. Anything else you want to tell the people? No, uh, I, I just I just want us to just practice self love and. Somebody said that, yeah, George want to save the community. Yeah, I do. But I want to first, I believe that the first aspect of saving the community is saving black men. Because I believe that when we save black men, black women get right, black children are protected. So when black men hold black men accountable, guess what? Black women don't get molested. Black boys are not getting shot in the street. Because when black men hold black men accountable, the community, the community is automatically protected. That's it. When I say it again, when black men Hold, and my brothers in the Israelite community understand this. Some of the strong brothers in the black church, the ones, the right black churches, brothers in the nation, uh, my conservative brothers. When black men hold black men accountable, the community automatically becomes protected because you can't just come into my area just doing the fuck because it's going to be some black men that's going to check your motherfucking ass. Exactly. When we hold, when black men hold black men accountable, a whole lot of shit in the community starts to go away. And guess what? Any type of women can't come into our community unless we okay it. So I rest on that. All right. And George, we said hopefully we can see you on the panel. But thanks again, guys. I got another show with Brother Bo Monty Ty Himba about fake uh pro-black keyboard warriors. Um, that brother is gonna be on my other channel. So guys, uh be ready for that show in about 30 minutes for those of you who can watch. So thanks again, brother George. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on. All right, thanks. Peace. And peace to uh, everybody for watching. Peace.